I will call this meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order at 7 o'clock on Monday, December 4th, 2023 in Millville. And if everyone can please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, a quick round of introductions. Roland Barrett. Richard Remmels. Andrew Allward. Jennifer Gill. Peter Caruso, Town Administrator. Matthew Maley. All right. And new business, appointment of Rachel Anderson to Green Communities Committee through June 30th, 2024. Um, and Rachel was at our last meeting and kind of gave a little, some information on why she's interested. I don't know. Rachel, do you want to come up to the table? I don't know if anyone has any new questions for Rachel. Richard, you weren't here last meeting, so I'm not hearing anything. I, uh, I did read the, uh, the email, so. Okay. Um, seems pretty well self-explanatory. So you're uh, you're in school, getting a bachelor's. Yes. Okay. And you're excited to put green energy all over the town, right? Get right to work. Yeah. <laughs> so all the panels on Peter's car. There you go. <laughs> They're already on there. <laughs> good answer. I'll distract them. You put them on. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So. Okay. Looking for a motion. I'll make a motion to. Appoint uh, Rachel Anderson to Green Community Committee through June 30th, 2024. Second. Second. Thank you, Roland. You're welcome. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Roland? Aye. Richard? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Aye. Matthew? <clears throat> Aye. All right, congratulations, Rachel. And you're more than welcome to stay for the entire meeting, but if you want to duck out, that's also it'll, perfectly it'll be fine. be riveting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I see we're supposed to start at 7.15 with a public hearing, um, so I thought we could maybe jump to 3C. So it's a joint meeting with lib library trustees to appoint Jane Reggio as trustee until the next election. Do you need to call your meeting to order, or do you need to do any procedural things? No, we can just uh, do the vote. I don't know if you needed to, you know, talk to Jane first. Or whatever. Okay. Jane would you like to come up to the table? I'm circling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm circling. 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 I'm
application for a parade. So this is for the Santa parade. And I'm looking to do it on December 23rd. And it starts at the fire department and they go up and down all the streets. So I have no questions or concerns on this. We do this no. every year. My kids go out and get candy canes. They like it. I think that, I think, <laughs> as far as I know, they've been doing it mm -hmm. since the fire trucks had engines and not horses. So. <laughs> <laughs> Only if uh, Smokey the Bear is going to be on the fire truck. Yeah. They used to have Smokey the Bear on there. You ever saw that? Because I was the only one paying attention to some of those parades. <laughs> And this is all volunteer, right? Yep. yep. Okay. Including the fuel? The fuel is uh, part of the, of the operation <clears throat> of the truck, which needs to run periodically anyway. So this is a good run of the diesel yep. engine of that truck. Um, okay. And we have all the, we, we, we don't have the highway approval yet, but we're getting that tomorrow. But, uh, yep. you know, he's been contacted, so. Um, but the two chiefs have signed off on this. Okay. Okay. And there's no barriers required by highway department or anything. It's mm -hmm. just, uh, sounds like a, it's always been a well-appreciated event, as far as I can tell. Yep. Kids love it. Yep. Yeah. Some adults do, too. Some, yeah. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right, looking for a motion? Motion to approve the uh, Santa Parade December 23rd, uh, 2023, to uh, bring Santa Claus around all of the streets of Millville on, on the fire truck. Looking for a second? Second. Thank you, Matthew. Ah, uh, see, I knew Matthew was excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be out there. I will be. For candy canes. <laughs> yes. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Roland? Aye. Richard? Aye. Andrew? Nay. Aye. And Matthew? Aye. Someone's getting cold this year. I know. Yeah. He gets cold every year. It keeps me warm. <laughs> Thank you. Tim, laugh at Tim I know. Tim liked the joke. Let's see. Um, and do I put today's date? Or... Should sure, we? yes, because okay. that's the date you're signing it. Yep. <clears throat> I'll put what I and want Although I didn't say right specifically for the library yep. trustees, although you're welcome to stay, you yep. can also. He'll probably, he, Santa's going to sign that too, <laughs> so put your list on there. I'm putting my list on there, yeah. <clears throat> you can stay or you can, it's totally up to you. Okay. <laughs> Matthew? Good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. That's great. Um, okay. All right. Well, yeah, he's not. Yeah. If you want to do he's that, we got a. Mr. Grinch. <laughs> Is it consistent? He is consistent. Um, okay, so you want to do the declaration of the snow emergency conditions? So this is from December 1st, 2023 to March 31st, 2024. Um, it states, please keep all vehicles off town roads during a winter storm or snow event. If a parked vehicle obstructs the snow removal, snow plowing, salting, or sanding operations of the town, the vehicle may be towed at the owner's expense at the discretion of the Melville Police Department. And this will be per the order of the Melville Board of Selectmen, 12 for 2023. <clears throat> fancy signature oh, one. Okay. One quick question. Sure. So I'm assuming that the first sentence is referring to just keeping cars off the roads complete, like even if they're driving, right? Or is that just I think this ones? is just for no, parking. parking. Okay. Should it be clarified maybe? You know, I did read that, but it does kind of make sense, though. They shouldn't be driving during the winter storm event. But yeah, well, no, I'm they just might wondering have what to. Like, if, what if yeah, you work at a hospital? Essential employees. Well, that's what employees I'm wondering. Are... Should, it, should it be specific to just parked cars, or should we just keep it as is to well, it basically is a, encompass all cars? It is a parking ban. Yeah, that's true. Snow emergency parking ban. 
So that's a different. The heading of it. Is I think snow. the heading is clear. Makes it clear because it says okay. parking ban. That's that's my opinion. And it's in a different color on that one too. So. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, I see. Fancy. For the audience. Oh, just a thought. Okay. No, it's okay. And Andrew, ultimately, your, your you're questions leaving it at the discretion of the police. police. Yeah. If we can get around them, we do. If they're really in the way, if we yeah. sit there behind it with the plow and wait for the police to come and move them. Okay. No. Usually they can do that by knocking on the door and get somebody, yeah, get somebody to move it. Yeah. yeah. And then they do a lap around the block and then park right back where they were before. <laughs> <laughs> So looking for a motion to approve. Motion to approve the snow emergency parking ban December 1st, 2023 through March 31st, 2024. Looking for a second. I'll second. Thank you, Richard. Even though I don't, I'm not as excited as Even though I'm told we don't have snow anymore because it's global <laughs> warming, so. <laughs> Any further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, I will call for the vote, Roland. Aye. Richard? Aye. Andrew? Upstein. Aye. Matthew? Aye. All right, you want me to sign this one, Peter? Yep. See, Andrew agrees with me. There's no more snow anymore. Banned. Yep. You voted aye. All right, my face. <laughs> Global warming's in effect. Flip the switch. Okay. Are we close enough to start on the assessor? It's only three minutes. Well, it's a public hearing, so you really can't oh, start until okay. the mm -hmm. posted time nope, that's of okay. 7.15. All right, well, let's go back and look at the... Board of Selectmen calendar ah, for 2024. There you go. Because that'll also be pretty quick. So that's same dates from this year, adjusted for a leap year and the date change. Mm. No, no holidays, like one time. So, and, and of course, yeah. it factors in holidays. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why you have Tuesdays and whatnot. Yeah. I forget which one, but it was, there was one holiday we scheduled it on. For oh, some that's reason. right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, think okay. I think we got them all. I think so. But you can amend, you always amend, you always yeah. still do the next meeting date mm -hmm. at your meeting. Yeah. So yep. sure. this provides a guide and sets, uh, you know, your calendars pretty well. Well, it was like, so for example, on Tuesday, January 2nd, is anyone planning on being away? Like, I don't mind moving that to the, that'd be to the 8th, and then it'd be the 8th and the 22nd, which is kind of how sure. we know. Why is it the 22nd? Oh, is that because of the Martin Luther King? So, Why is that? Because that's three weeks but, apart. I, you know, I did all this, and that's a problem when I do it. <laughs> um, yeah, the eighth would be better. Yeah, the eighth would be good if you did that. Yeah, why don't we do the eighth and then the 22nd, and then we yeah. avoid January 1st, which is a holiday, and then January 15th. There you go. Okay. All okay. right. So Monday the 8th. All right. All right, any other issues anyone sees? Um, we move March 18th because I will be most likely out of sure. the state at that point. So. so you're going to have it the 4th and the 25th? That works with me. So. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> so do we have a meeting on April 1st? Isn't that, when is the elections? Isn't it the first it's the first Monday. Monday. Yeah. So that would be election day. Yeah, so I think we ran into Tuesday? that before. You want to do the used, Tuesday the 2nd? No, we used to do it Tuesday night instead. Yeah. Or do you want to do it the week after, the 8th, again? And if we do it Tuesday night, everybody can get the business quick that's been elected. But then people who get sworn in, they have to get, like, they have, like, I don't know, 20 hours to get sworn in. Do you want to give them a little bit more time? Or, no? I mean... You invite the shop up to your meeting. Yeah. Yep. I mean, we used to always do it night after town meeting. Okay. Uh, the selectman's meeting was always the Tuesday after. Okay. So Tuesday the second. Okay. Mm, and then sixth and twentieth. May looks good. June looks good. September <coughs> Tuesday the third. Okay, I think that's be the only changes. Does that look good to everybody? So it'll be January, the changes were in January, it'll be Monday the 8th and Monday the 22nd. And then in March, it'll be Monday the 4th and Monday the 25th. 
and in April will be Tuesday the 2nd and Tuesday the 16th. So October, Columbus Day. Uh, Columbus, oh, is that when, is Columbus Day the 7th or the 14th? Well, Columbus Day is the 12th, but which day so, are we celebrating? So it's probably the 14th, so we're probably okay. All right. Another one just jumped in my head. <clears throat> Oh, April, Tuesday, the 6th, that's school vacation week. The 16th? Yeah. yeah. It's probably okay, but just... April? Yeah. I'll be in Myrtle Beach. <laughs> you can have the meeting. I'll okay. be in Myrtle Beach. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you can do we'll it. leave it. Show. Yeah. Right. Just don't turn the camera on if you're going to be out in the sun. You know. <laughs> no. No. All right. I might be... Are we good? I think so. Okay, looking for a motion to approve the... I make a motion to approve the FY 20, uh, 25 up... Oh, sorry. The calendar, yeah. The 2024 cal BOS calendar as presented with noted corrections or changes. Thank you, Andrew. Looking for a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Richard. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. <laughs> Roland? Aye. Richard? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Aye. Matthew? Aye. All right. Okay, and now we can start the public hearing. Two minutes late, I apologize. Do you, David, and you, Paul, for the public hearing? Yeah, I'm going to let Dave take this for okay. the terminology and the getting through it. And then if there's any questions, we can both kind of field those as we go. Okay, sounds good. All right. Uh, did you need to call the public hearing to order first? Mm -hmm. I think you have to enter into the public hearing. That's you. But, oh, I have to do that. Yeah. Okay, I thought that yeah. it would be the Board of Assessors. Nope. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nope. So I will call this public hearing at 7.18 p.m., on December 4th, 2023, the property tax classification with Assessor David Manzello by Zoom. All right, great. Good to see everybody. And uh, we're at that time of year again to discuss tax rate shift factors and all that fun. Um, everybody has the packet in front of them? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Should I share mine for people watching at home or I think that would be great uh, so I just need a uh, screen share turned on please yep. that's in process it should, be good. <laughs> it should be good I will do my best to zoom in here uh, where to go can everybody see that sound here. Oh, we can hear you. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah. yeah. But you're not sharing. Well, I lost sound somehow. Hold on one second. Sorry. Anybody know sign language? <laughs> Tim, you didn't mute him by accident, <clears throat> did you? I don't think so. I didn't touch any... Uh... Nope. No, see how it does it's on his end. Yeah. Yeah, I can't hear anybody. Yeah, we can hear you. <clears throat> but he can't hear you say that. I know. Can you hear us now? I can. Perfect. Thank you. That was weird. <laughs> Good. Tim's a genius. That's right. That's why he makes the big bucks. All right. We have redundancy. All right. Can you see that? <clears throat> yes. Yep. Perfect. <clears throat> okay. So we are uh, here tonight to discuss uh, steps six, seven, and eight uh, in uh, setting of a tax rate. 
It all started back in uh, early January with Peter sending out his budget advisory notices and everybody sending in their budgets and then it going to town meeting. Um, and then uh, Paul and I doing our thing on the assessor side through steps two, three, four, and five. So we'll get down to terminology. Um, so levy, tax levy is the amount of property taxes to be raised. The levy amount is determined by the budget, the total amount of approved budget, less revenues from other sources like motor vehicle excise, municipal fees, and state aid. Uh, in Millville, for fiscal 2024, the actual levy to be raised is uh, estimated to be $5,828,561.80. This represents a 3.71% increase over fiscal 23's levy of $5,619,803.74. Uh, a levy ceiling. The levy ceiling is two and a half percent of the total taxable value of uh, the town. So for fiscal 24, the total taxable value for um, Millville will be $441,892,479. Um, two and a half percent of that uh, means that the town could not levy in excess of 11,047,312. So we're a far cry from that, so that's good. New growth revenues. Uh, these are all new property taxes derived from newly taxable properties like new construction, additions, renovations, subdivisions, and new personal property found in the community. For fiscal 2024, the new growth revenues are $41,744. Again, this is revenue, not the valuation that we've picked up. Uh, levy limit. So the levy limit is calculated by adding 2.5% of the previous fiscal year's levy limit plus new growth for the uh, present fiscal year. And then exceeding that levy limit requires an override of Prop 2.5, a capital expenditure, oh, tongue twister there, sorry, or excluded debt. The levy limit for fiscal year 2024 is certified at $5,853,761. So here we have a little grid on how all this is calculated. Again, we started with uh, fiscal 23's levy. Added in Prop 2.5, that uh, comes to $137,223. We add in new growth, the $41,744, which gets us to that levy limit number of $5,667,891. Still do have some uh, excluded debt of $185,870 for the total of $5,853,761. Uh, excess levy capacity is uh, the amount of the levy we did not appropriate. So uh, excess levy for fiscal 24 will be $25,199.20. Uh, next, we're going to look at, uh, this is the assessor's LA-4 uh, report. So the LA stands for local assessment. We report this to the Bureau of Local Assessment. It's a breakdown of all the property types, total count, and total valuation per, per uh, class. Uh, you can see class one is residential. Down here, we have the total value of 412 million eighty four thousand eight hundred ninety five class three is commercial five million eight hundred three thousand two hundred and eleven class four is industrial two million one hundred eighty four thousand nine hundred and class five is personal property twenty one million 
819,473. So when we chart those out um, when we're talking about the shift factor this is uh, where all that comes into play so our residential percentage uh, that we get uh, property taxes from uh, is 93.25 percent and the CIP <clears throat> make up only 6.75 percent so very small um, and you can see that you know, they're slightly, residential is slightly increased, mostly with uh, the new construction and aggressive economic market. And commercial has uh, come down a little bit uh, as we don't have a lot of new commercial. We have one new, one new property this year. Uh, the rest is uh, existing properties that have been in existence for some time. Shifting the tax burden. Uh, generally, municipalities that consider doing a shift um, have that CIP factor of 25% or more. Um, that helps to maintain lower residential taxes by doing a shift. Uh, with Millville having such a small percentage, you would almost have to shift the entire maximum of 50% to make a difference in a residential tax bill. Um, so the Board of Assessors and has generally uh, re recommended not doing a shift to the selectmen. Um, and given that here we have the tax rates uh, that would be representative of having a single tax rate uh, in the community. So for fiscal 24, um, a single tax rate is coming down 70 cents. Uh, we're coming in at $13.19. The average single family values and rates and taxes are displayed here. So again, everyone knows we've been in a very aggressive seller's market. Um, single family values almost uh, increased approximately 10% from last year. You can see the average single family value, which we know is fictitious number we just take our total taxable value of single families by divided by our total number of single families to come up with these but just kind of give us uh, a sense of where things are traveling uh, so we're up from 377.3 from fiscal 23 to 412,700 for fiscal 24. average tax bill um, is going up $202.81. Uh, all in all, that's not bad, uh, mm -hmm. less than a dollar a day, if you put it, break it out that way. So, um, so here are some examples of uh, shifts. Uh, I kind of broke it out as 1%, 5%, 10, 25, and 50. So you can see last year's average tax bill on single families was $5,240.70. And as I was saying, we would have to do the full shift of 50% just to keep uh, a very nominal increase on a residential tax bill, which also would put a $1,500 increase on your average commercial property. It kind of puts an undue burden on the commercial properties to have a very little return on the residential properties. <clears throat> so the board once again recommends to the uh, board of selectmen, uh, select board, sorry, um, to uh, adopt a residential shift factor of 1.0 uh, with a single tax rate of $13.19 per, per thousand value. It doesn't hurt my feelings if you say Board of Selectmen, by the way, Dave. That's okay. So this is actually written out as what the um, motion needs to be. Okay. The voting uh, tax shift factor. Okay, great. 
Any questions from select board or anyone in the audience? I can't see the audience, but. There is actually an audience, which is not typical, um, but I don't have any questions. This all makes sense to me. Any questions, concerns? Oh, oh math. Yep. All right. Looking for a motion? So I'll move that the board of, the Millville Board of Selectmen votes to in accordance with MGL Chapter 40, Section 56, as amended, the percentage of local tax levy which will be borne by each class of real and personal property relative to setting the fiscal year 2024 tax rates and set the residential factor at 1.000 with a corresponding CIP shift of 1.000 pending certification of the town's annual tax recap by the Massachusetts Department of Revenue. Thank you, Andrew. Looking for a second? Second. Thank you, Roland. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Roland? Aye. Richard? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Aye. Matthew? Aye. All right. So I will make a motion to close the public hearing at 7.32 p.m. Second. Second. Roland was faster. Yeah. <laughs> Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Roland? Aye. Richard? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Aye. Matthew? Aye. All right. Thanks to you both. Thank you so much. Thanks, Dave. So uh, just so you know, the selectmen no longer need to reuse the, the document that you have to sign. We no longer need that. The uh, okay. town clerk certifies your vote, and I will get everything submitted for our tax rate as soon as Diane does that. Okay, great. So step nine for the selectmen doesn't need to be done is what you're saying, right, Dave? Yeah, so their their signing of that is basically the certification by Diane that they're gotcha. on there. Awesome. Yep. That's great, Dave. Thank you. All right. Have a great night, folks. Thank you, you too. If I don't talk to anybody uh, beforehand, have a great Christmas. Thank you, you too. Thank you, you too. Thanks, Dave. All right. I think I missed. Is this just one page? Yes. Okay. Oh, it's like, so I have all the signature licenses here. Okay. And I have the packets here should there be any questions. Okay. All right? Yep. So what you have are complete packets. Jerry did a great job. I call her the license lady of Millville. <laughs> she does a great job. And she's come a long way in three years here doing this sort of thing very well. So what you have is a whole bunch of licenses to sign uh, by all of you pending your approval of and I would recommend you just approve the list as written somebody could read through each entity that you're approving tonight which is not the two uh, highlighted in red so all the, all the ones, ones. that complete that's okay. correct and so they don't even have their applications in or no they're mostly in it's just okay. waiting on one that has an insurance uh, okay. you know coverage and that sort of thing okay so they're just not complete were completed then. today on Make, one or okay. one of them Got it. Just, so yeah. they'll be complete by next time otherwise okay. i you know to the extent there's one laggard that there might have been in the past mm -hmm. you may they may go without a license sounds good well versus having a special meeting of you all Yep. Which we have on done December before. December 31st. Yep. So the goal is to have everything in by the 18th, mm -hmm. all set and ready for your approval. Okay. Of those other two. Okay. So looking for a motion? So we just have to read this right here. So is it just the list, Peter, or should we read like George's Variety All Alcohol Rated License? Yes, I would I would recommend you just read those so everybody knows. Okay. okay. And, and, then each... and while you're reading it, you know, and then once you approve all, all of those... Like, so I would read per the list, read the list, yep. mm -hmm. vote on that list that you just read. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you approve them all, then these would go around for signatures. Okay, perfect. Okay. okay. Uh, so I'll make a motion to approve George's Variety Store All Alcohol Retail Liquor License, Pot Belly Pub All Alcohol Liquor License, Common Victoral License, Pool Table License, Automatic Amusement Device License, Entertainment License. The Polish American Club all alcohol liquor li all alcohol liquor license pool table license entertainment license common Victoria license automatic amusement device license Millville Services class two license Millville Motors class two license Andy's Auto and Sales class two license. Thank you, Andrew. Looking for a second. 
I'll second. Thank you, Richard. Any further discussion? No. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Roland? Aye. Richard? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Aye. Matthew? Aye. All right, perfect. And while you're signing these, I'll just say that uh, also it takes cooperation from the licensees to get everything in. It's a tedious process. Uh, a lot of pieces of paper flying here and there. So, yeah. you know, appreciation for those folks to do it in a timely manner as well. So with these other two here, they say no app and you've got a date here. So they have a deadline. Somebody yeah, so we, so I can just tell you I have their applications here, just one of them is waiting. Uh, Sherry gave me the details. One of them is waiting on, you know, just uh, Are there multiple a Corey. One's no. waiting on. Because they only had one. Remember the list? Oh, inspection. Seeing that. Signed so. off on, which was done today. Pop belly that sort of thing. Yeah. Was... So they're mostly in, Richard. Well, because one year when the board of selection was just me, Andrew, and Todd. We had to have a lice a meeting on December like twenty seventh or something. Yes. <clears throat> I'll take that one. Everybody's good. This one. Uh, yep. Next Sorry, uh, the okay. other one's a hold too. I think. And yep. the Which one? I know, right. Oh, they, these are hold. Yep, Marty's. Are... Yeah, these are all good. Are okay. Nice. The eyeballs, the black yep. pens. Yeah. Okay. Signing. I know. It's for riveting TV. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's very exciting. Right? <laughs> that, that's part of your commercial base. I mean, that's yeah. uh, yeah. Yeah. the action is. Base. So, Peter, are you going to ride the fire truck as Santa? Or? No, I do have a Santa costume, but I'm not uh, bringing it to Melville. Santa could always use an elf, too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're insured for that. Well, I, am, I would vote no. I am a CDL operator. That may be great. But I don't think the five firefighters. Are. I don't think they are. <clears throat> Just want to swear me as a firefighter for one day. Just so I can drive. Just so you can drive. I think you're. Fellow board members would have to weigh in on that. Well, if I put fuel in the truck, I know Andrew would support. Oh, <laughs> now you're talking. Yes, I, I could throw some diesel fuel in it. 
That's a big truck to be driving around the many small roads of Millville, especially if there's snow on the ground at that uh, time of year. Cars are uh, outlawed on snow. Yeah, but the <laughs> turns are tough. Yeah. Thank you. It's only 40 feet, Peter. It's not that long. Okay. Okay. Good. So now we're down to 3H uh, FY operating budget guidance draft review. So I guess the only thing that I would say is we saw how much we're raising taxes and things like that. Like, do we almost want to level fund? Like, I just don't, there's just no money. Right. So first, I will preface this. The date might change to January 8th or 9th. So after okay. your first January meeting, mm -hmm. I did want to get this in front of you, which is using the similar you know, guidelines for some of the budget items, particularly the salary items that are non-contractual, uh, you know, non-union contract ones. For you to think about given the other challenges, which are, uh, as, as noted here, of MES water, right, uh, which will be a bump up in the budget that, from what we're used to, and also uh, a bump up for the communications for MetaComet, our 50% next fiscal year. I still don't have that 100% confirmed, but it is consistent. We were getting three years where our our uh, assessment was covered 100% by state 911, and then two years at 50%. So the three years will be up by August of next year. So, so MetaComet will only be like partially or like 50% funded, so their their assessment to us for this fiscal year was 116 grand. Yeah, and uh, so it'll be at least 120 or so next year, and we'll be stuck with 60, you know, 50% of that. But will the will the costs be burdened for the entirety? Because it's you said it was starting in August. So yeah, that so that's like still to be confirmed. Oh, okay. <clears throat> that that that's correct. Yeah, so it might be a. Part, you know, one, yeah, just one or two works. months uh, that might save us a little. But it's still the magnitude of the additional yeah. cost is added to the, is taking a big chunk out of the, you know, 150 grand otherwise available from Prop 2.5 and, and new growth as estimated, roughly estimated. So I will continue to refine this, but I, I think your input or any, any discussion you might have as Jen says, you know, level fund things and so forth that, you know, not subject to contracts. Yeah, I, I mean, this is a challenge. I just don't know what else we would do. Any other thoughts or ideas? Open, open to them. Yeah, and there's magic to be tried to make, you know, there's some effort to try to find things more effectively in there, in this budgeting, and I don't know what, what exactly, but, uh, you know, it, some of the things that you, are the unknowns, the number of students going to the BVTs of the world, the Tri-Valleys, the Norfolk Aggies, and those have big swings that can go against us or benefit us. We've had some benefit in recent years. Might change. <clears throat> and if you're striving for a no override and no use of free cash or stabilization, then the math doesn't work. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Level fund. Yep. Um, with maybe a possible looking to reduce things, reduce the line items. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. we'll continue to refine. Maybe there'll yeah. be further discussion at your next meeting, and then nail it down by the eighth uh, of January. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, um, so the core selection survey draft. So I was actually thinking about this a little bit more because I think we're trying to do too many things with the survey. So I thought we would separate out, have one like kind of general survey, and then maybe one on <clears throat> would it, people be open to an override. And I thought if each one of us could meet with a department head and see what they would suggest, because I just made the numbers that are on the survey now, I made those up based on like, mm -hmm. you know, a decent guesses. Mm -hmm. um, but they're not, but the department heads would have better guesses. 
So I was wondering if we could each assign a couple of us to speak to department heads and then get those numbers. And then we probably wouldn't be sending this out before the holidays and we would get lost, people throw it away. So let's send it out in January sometime. Okay, go ahead. Well, I'm just wondering, because with the projects, the way we have them standing at the moment, some of the bigger projects, mm -hmm. even if we wanted to raise tax or we had to raise taxes because of those projects, we wouldn't be able to raise it much more to increase for any other departments, really. When you, why well, not? With, well, if, if an override was approved, then yes. Yes, but if you have a, the water, for instance, yes. that'll raise it by how much again? It was like... Six. So it could be 60 grand increase, yeah. roughly. Yeah. So, I mean, how much are you going to raise the taxes in order to help other departments before you basically... And then you have the schools <clears throat> and then all the other projects that may come down the road. So I think that we should get what the departments need and and they might have a number that's like, this is what I need now. And I could see it being this much in like four or five years. And then we would have to come up with some, um, a way to manage that. Yeah, I just, I don't see if there's a real viability of any of that. Well, I think we need to at least ask the question. Are people interested in override? If it's no again, then it's no. Well, it's not so much that. It's the fact that how much can you raise in the override? Well, well our so, ceiling is $11 million. Yes, but... $5.3 million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you do that, what are, who's going to be living here? The people that paid a $1 million cash down the street from me for their house in the last year. But with the, the mortgages right now the way they are, and also people who are already living, because it's not like we have that many people moving in and out, so if they already live here... How much can you afford? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's so the then they should come out. And if so, if we were so I'm not even saying we're putting this to a vote, Andrew, this is just a survey I'm, to I'm, take the temperature. I'm, if it were to go to a vote, all those people need to do is come out and vote now. Yes, I know. But I'm, what I'm saying is, is that you have these projects. They'll increase the tax rate possibly by exorbitant amounts. Which How, projects are you referring to that would increase the tax rate? The school and the water those two alone okay are coming up the, we know those are coming up so the which school project do the school you mean project the, the... we just did at the fall town meeting we just great gave it the green light to go forward with the planning oh the, if um, that goes through what you know i mean something's um, gonna go through something's Whether gonna go through building or do this but it's stuff. gonna cost a lot of money yeah. and that'll go come from where yes. and then so my point being is is that you're gonna have these huge products that are gonna raise the taxes regardless how much more can you raise to help other departments with those increases? Well, I will. So that's why I want to ask the question on our town budget now, and then people can figure out what they want to do with other projects later. Because those aren't coming for a vote now. They would be coming for a vote in two years. But we have to plan for that. They're coming. It's uncomfortable. And it stinks, <coughs> but that's the reality of it, is the fact that even if we did have an override, odds are the departments wouldn't be able to be helped because it wouldn't be too much. Well, it's different, though. The, and a project for the school would be a debt exclusion that would be voted on separately. But it still raises the taxes. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't, you know, how it comes doesn't necessarily mean it's going to change how much you're getting taxed. You're still getting taxed that amount. People's budgets aren't exactly, you know, no, overflowing. I'm, yep, no, I I hear you. So. But so just from the, as the budget meister, if you will, right? The, the, I, we've already identified at least two hardcore, likely big bites out of the budget pie, which is not very big to begin with, mm -hmm. right? And we don't, and then the unknowns are the school... Or, or the outside schools, but the biggest unknown is BMR. And we've already, you know, in discussions previously with the superintendent and the leadership of the schools, when we did the budget for this fiscal year, there was some forewarning that there were going to be even greater challenges mm -hmm. for FY25. So as this group and the finance committee and then the voters are going to have to be wrestling with some probably significant challenges to decide how to deal with um, demands that have to be addressed. And 
one element of that is getting a, a read on what the temperature is. We got your read, for example, right? But others may say, well, I, I still want to be supportive of the school. So if you had an override to meet the 500 grand that the school wants for FY25, and I'm just throwing that number, right? I, I yeah, have no clue, this, right? Yeah. So, but as an example, right? That's a That's something that Money has to be found to be able to meet that need if that needs to be met. And that, and if the other community is meet, wanting to meet that need, you know, there's pressure, that kind of pressure as well, you know, to be aligned with the other community. So I, I don't know what, I think it's going to be very challenging this coming budget year. Mm -hmm. And any indicators you can get from the residents, and and if you put out a survey, even though you're not, you're not being held to it, you're getting a read, and people come back and say, you know, no, no darn way, <laughs> you know, and that's not the right word. Um, th that tells you something. But if they say I'm supportive of X Y Z or I'm supportive of this, I wish we had more coverage at the, you know, in the fire department. I wish we had more coverage and more police doing shifts on the roads and blah blah blah. You know these, you know some people that are certainly people like Paul referenced. I mean, you know, they're coming into this community thing. It's a bargain to come into this town, mm -hmm. and. You know, where I lived in, you know, the average tax bill where I raised my kids, it was 15 grand a year, right? Three times what you have here. I don't live there anymore, and I'm glad for that. <laughs> uh, I couldn't afford it. But the the point is that, you know, it's a value thing is where you're ultimately going to get to. And uh, uh, you don't have depth in departments. So if you're going to, you know, not, if you want to squeeze a depart you know some of the departments there there isn't much there that hasn't already been squeezed out to be able to function um and you know what you walk in here any day and what do you got maybe six people doing the business of the town on an average day for you know part not mostly part time i mean it's you know so there are challenges that millville as a standalone entity may have to reconsider or have to really address. That's all. I, I I don't mean to be on a soapbox, but I'm I'm going to have to be trying to help you pull it together as the budget meister. That's all. So I, I know what we're up against, and it's not going to be it's not going to improve the challenges. They're going to be harder. And I I still think that the school project is a separate question. It, it is, but it, it doesn't change the fact that we're still taxing the people. Your bill, your tax bill doesn't, it doesn't really, I mean, you can break it down, but it's still mm -hmm. going to be charged to you. No, no, no. So, so, so I did, like, say both these pass, so they could have an override, mm -hmm. and then the, ta the project for the school. Mm -hmm. That would be a huge increase. Yep. But we don't decide that. That's what tax, the taxpayers vote on that. Like, we put the question forward, and if they want... If they, yep, I want to do both these things, then it's yes. If they say, I will do one of them, then, then we go that route. If they say, I'm not doing any of these, then that's a new challenge for us. But that's, I think we need to at least ask the question around our operating budget, because that's what our main responsibility is. So I was going to reach out to the fire chief and police chief and say, what would an increase look like now? And would that going at the two and a half percent for the next five years, would that be sufficient? <clears throat> and I was wondering if there were any volunteers to speak to others. So like library and COA, if someone reach out to them, highway and school, I think are the big heavy hitters. Are there other? I think for the police and fire, I'm seeing them again on the 18th. Oh, yeah. Okay, so why don't you do that? Sorry, Richard. Yeah. For I'm sure. Put together a little... Uh, that would be great. Packet, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I can reach out to the school and see if they have any guesses. I did send them a heads up that we were considering the survey. They said they wouldn't know anything to January at the earliest, so... I don't think we've seen Brian in here in the last couple of years. I haven't That's seen him. That's... 
true. Um, actually, the last budget submitted to the town um, was Peter did that budget for highway. Um, two for years. Two so. years. Okay. So I can send him an email. I don't know. Does anyone have a good, like, a friendly relationship with him? Besides going up and knocking on the door, I mean, I can give it a shot, but. All right. Well. Okay. Well, I work during the days. I'm not around. All right. Richard, you'll take that one, too. I'm giving you three now. Yeah, you know. Okay. Yeah. I mean, only if I can drive the fire truck. <laughs> okay. I'll see what I can do. Oh, yeah, sure. No question. Okay. I mean, I'll wear a hat, too, you know. <laughs> I'll sweeten the pot. All right, so I'll do the school, um, library, COA. Andrew, I know you went to both their meetings recently. Do you want to do those? Uh, so I've only met with the library so far, but I do plan on meeting with both of them again. Okay. So you want to ask? Yeah, I can okay. ask. All right, Roland and Matthew, you're off the hook, but be prepared to be assigned to the next thing. If, there's, if you want to divvy up, I can take and Highway? Yeah. Want to reach out to Brian? Sure. Okay. Take that one off your plate. I mean, I live there. It doesn't really matter. I know. He lives kind of their neighbors. I mean, I just want to go over there. Yeah, okay. no, it's fine. It's okay. Fine. Unless you want to you wanna sit in and join the police and fire, we can always use somebody there on the 18th. Okay, and we're just a few minutes waiting for Dr. Gullick for the old yep. business. He has a water update. So I guess yep. do you want to skip to announcements, Peter? Uh, sure. So I, I need Tim out here to talk about the Cable Nor'easter uh, Awards update. He, Millville Cable Access. Tim, if you could come out and talk about that. Give a speech, do a song and a dance. Can you film yourself sitting there, do you think, to talk about it? No, everything's back there. I can, I can just say what it is quick. So the Alliance for Community Media of the Northeast Region gives out, um, you can submit projects you've done for a recognition of different awards. We worked with Emil, Emil Berthelet with the Historical Commission doing um, a mobile quiz where he had this idea where you ask a question, post it up online, so people can kind of think about the questions while they drive around the town. You know, like when was the Chestnut Hill Meeting House built and stuff. If you drive by, it's like right there on the building, that kind of thing. And then we would go to the locations and places, film him doing the answers, and then ask the next batch of questions for the next episode. So we submitted the episodes we've done so far, and we got second place in community impact. Nice. We didn't get first place, which is fine, but the first place was like a really cool like puppet like thing. So <laughs> I, th I, th I think first place deserved it. So but anyway, that's that's, oh, I, that's I yeah. think that's incredible. You, you, Great you, job. You, yeah. he, he brings horsepower that uh, most communities don't have and uh, and high quality work. It's awesome. But yeah, that's the Congrats. Congratulations. Congrats. Nice job. Start the knowledge here. Yep. Yeah. Well, I have one other announcement while we're sure. at it. It's just I noticed it, there's the uh, annual uh, tree lighting at the Veterans Memorial Park tomorrow evening, uh, 6 p.m. And there's music and Santa's going to be there. It sounds like a great event. So it's hosted by the trustees of the park. And they have a special thank you to Millville Fire and Rescue. And they posted that on Facebook. Uh, so I, that was part of the source of my info. Okay. Um, so, sounds good. Tomorrow night, yep. 6 o'clock, under the lights. Hope one of you can make it. I can't go. I made child pickup. Um, uh, correspondence. Anything? I have nothing on uh, departments. Okay. On correspondence, sure. you have in there a request for a library to come in and make a presentation in January. So, we'll put that on. Sure. Probably, well, we'll figure out which meeting you prefer to have it on, the 8th or yeah. the other one. Um, and whether the library, when they're quite available Do you want for which, this. any preference? You can give them some notice, the 8th or the 22nd? 22nd, good, because... Why don't we do the 22nd so yeah. we're not, like, coming back from, you know, okay. clearing the cobwebs and stuff from sounds, the break. Sounds good. Okay. All right, okay. perfect. Awesome. Okay. Dr. Dr. Gullick, your Gullick. timing is perfect. <laughs> Can't wait for all that good news. Yep. <clears throat> Dr. Gullick here. You can come up to the table. We're ready for you. Good evening, 
I love the facts. So this is a quick reminder here in terms of the treatment process. The key point we're looking at is the green sand filters. We add chlorine to them and that helps oxidize the iron and the manganese. It also creates a coating on the filter that helps remove the dissolved iron and manganese, mostly manganese in that case. And then we want to get a little bit of chlorine coming out, but not too much. If we get very little for too long, we get a lot of manganese and iron breakthrough. If we get too, too much chlorine, we get those high, nasty disinfection byproducts, the halocetic acids and trihalomethanes. Getting that balance is trickier here than pretty much any other water supply <laughs> anywhere. Um, so we're going to look at manganese and iron data first, because the first thing we're doing is removing the metals. Right, that's the key thing, get rid of the, what causes the color. Causes color once it gets oxidized. When they're dissolved, it's not really color. So the, the circles here, these are the manganese raw water data. It's pretty consistent, around 1.2 parts per million or milligram per liter. And the ones that went up here in the triangles, this is what's coming out of the green sand filters. And it went up, it wasn't doing well when school started last year nor was it through the year and then by february when the chlorine injector broke we had a lot coming out more than was going in even so it's desorbing off without having the chlorine still there but look at all this everything since march so that's before i became the operator it's when northeast water solutions changed the green sand and look what it's done we've only had one detection since then of manganese and it was really low that's pretty can do better than that okay so here's the iron. I don't show the influent level on this because it's too high. <laughs> and everything else here would be a flat line at the bottom. So we'll show you that in a second. But going back to March, and you can see this is where it reached up in February, just kind of that point there. And it was pretty bad. And this is the levels we're looking at, if I may. This 0.05 is the state and federal limit. It's a recommended limit for color. It's known in the industry to be too high, should be stricter. We want to be below 0.02 or less. Um, and uh, where was I going here? So on this one, the line is 0.3. That's the secondary maximum contaminant <coughs> also. <coughs> 0.3 for iron. We have been below that every single time since March. So any thoughts on that? Questions, I mean? Iron and manganese? It's looking good so far. And isn't that ultimately we, the whole purpose of the green sand filter? It is, is the purpose of the green right. sand. Okay. is to take out iron and manganese. And manganese is tricky because it doesn't react with chlorine quickly. It takes many, many, many hours or longer. And so that's where you need the coating on the media to remove that manganese. And that's the first thing you usually see with the color. But the, le the levels here, again, are very high. Just a question. Is it, uh, does any of those things get affected by uh, a higher use or lower use? Yes. I know you talked before about you needed to have so much throughput to be able to I'll measure. I'll come back to that. Make right. sure I answer that. But we're going to come yep. and talk about flow at some point. Yep. Um, I've changed my strategy on that and how I was approaching it. So we will get to that. But it does make a difference. Okay. So what we have at this, uh, these have been at a variety of different flow rates. Um, students were still in school in the right. beginning of this section. Right. Mm -hmm. So plus then we've had very little in the summer and since. So it right. goes. It can work both ways. Yep. It's still trickier to handle because <laughs> of the flow really like tricks. Okay, so let's take a look at the iron in the raw water. So again, we are looking at 0 0.3. So it's way down here at the bottom. Here's our last sample in November. It's the second highest in 10 years that we just had. It was 30 parts per million. I say that with such emphasis because it's an absurd number. It's, I mean, it eight and yeah, eight would be high. 30 is just ridiculous. But this system, I won't say me, this system's getting it down to 0 0.1. That is just awesome. And that's, I'll give that credit to the system built by Northeast Water. Okay? We're managing the chlorine here, but they built this, put the system in. The total organic carbon, which was alleged to interfere, remember all that talk about total organic carbon complexing with the iron and manganese, and that's what's coming through. And I said, no, it wasn't. And that led into all this beaver stuff and all these other things. Yes. Well, this last sample in November was 17 milligram per liter, above anything 
I've seen yet in this time. And the state said, oh, we've seen high ones before, like eight or 10, somewhere in that range, I think, mm -hmm. was mentioned at the May joint meeting with the school committee. So this number was, again, ridiculously high. So we're adding a lot of chlorine, about 26 parts per million, to about 17 milligram per liter of TOC. My, one of my other clients are adding five milligram per liter to three milligram per liter TLC. This is just huge. The difference here is the time is not long, but at those concentrations, things go quickly. Okay. Um, so let's go to the big one, the halo acetic acids. That's the one that we had all the public notices for over time, right? And the theory was if we keep the chlorine in the right range, then we won't get too much of it periodically might, but shouldn't. And going back to July, again, before I became operator in August that month, all of these have been pretty good. So you're looking at an annual average of 60, and we are certainly below 60, at least for this last half year. Mm -hmm. So when you start adding in these other numbers, 249 and 140, no, we're still in violation. We will remain in violation for a little while. But those are pretty darn good numbers given we're comparing to 60 and what it's been in the past. Because we're, we're in violation because of, of the quarterly, the annual quarterly averaging Yes, you have four quarters. That we have to follow. Okay. And in this case, we're averaging three months to be a quarter. Then they average four, then each quarter gets averaged right. to an annual average. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're looking at it, that's regulatory. If you're looking at it scientifically, I just want to see the individual, oops, the individual yeah. numbers. But so those notices will go out again for another quarter because of this averaging They're from automatically the first half. And we're going to cover right. what's going to yeah. happen yeah. on yeah. that. Okay. Got a slide as far as yeah. thumbs up, thumbs yeah. down from the re state. Reinforce that. <clears throat> okay. Uh, anything else to say on that one? Nope. Well, I'm collecting other data, so I would like to note that I have higher numbers than some of these <clears throat> under different circumstances. Those were the compliance samples. But we'll show you those too. We're not hiding any of them. <laughs> so these are some of those experimental results, as I call them, or research. Hmm. And like looking at that same day there, and this is the, the numbers we have for, oops, halocytic acids were at 42 and 52. Where am I? And, and those are two sample and, locations, Rich. 42 Rich, those are two sample locations. Yes. and this Some of which you don't do every month. Correct. This 52 is a typo. That should be a 42. By the way, I just noticed that. <laughs> My apologies. That's even better. Um, yeah, so DBP-1 and DBP-2 are the two compliance rooms in the school. Those numbers should be about the same as the storage tank. Because when we take these samples, we're letting the water flow. It's only got to go through a little pipe through a building. So it's coming from the storage tank through the pressure tank. Should get that. They should be pretty similar, and they have been for years. So what I'm going to do experimentally a fair amount of the time is I will simply take the, I'll get the green sand effluents because I want to know what's coming out. Once it goes into the tank, temperature affects it, dilution affects it. Maybe if there's anything on the, um, those are the main two things that will affect biodegradation can happen. So I really want to know what's coming out of the filters. But in this case, you'll notice that the halocytic acids coming out on that day were higher than what's, what ended up in the school and out of the storage tank. Same with this day. How could that be? How can they go away? Well, maybe they got, it got diluted as different water comes into that tank, or they do go away from biodegradation. It's very common with haloacetic acids. I have one client, it's a small town, they'll have 80 in one site and zero or one in another site. <laughs> they haven't figured that one out yet, but you usually don't get that much biodegradation, but you can. Um, so anyways, uh, so you can see here was a higher number coming out of the filter. Why was that so high when we had this low at that day? I'm not too sure. Back in August and September, we, we couldn't see the data of the chlorine. We didn't have it remotely yet. So we were going blind and couldn't control it <laughs> unless we were there. Now we can see it, but still can't control it unless we're there. So if it's going up on, in the middle of the night and I'm not watching it, even if I was watching, I'd have to come here to do something. Um, Total trihalomethanes. Well, that you may recall, we didn't quite have such a smashing success the first time, all right? We had a 197 and a 113. Again, still blind to the chlorine, wasn't too sure why. They have, however, in the last two months been better. And that's comparing to 80 in this case. So I still wanna see more months of better data like that, but at least that's a good sign. 
I make no conclusions here what happens in the future. As your financial advisor will, will mention, past, past um, success is not in necessarily indicative of future success or something like that, right? Um, question for you. Um, you. September you had 113, and then it, it cut in more than half, 57 and 56, October, November. When did the um, online computer system come online to give you those ratings? We started getting the see the chlorine data in October. That September was like September 5th. So was September, you, that was what? That was done manually as opposed to the computer? Um, there, your computer came online, correct? And then started giving you data well, on a regular we basis? We had a computer that we had, what was installed was a transmittal system that sends it up to the cloud. Yeah. And then I can see the data, I can see the chlorine levels remotely. And right. I can see when the, when the filters are actually running, that which isn't that frequent. Excuse me? You see that in real time? I do. Now well, there's a, about a 15 to 30 minute delay on the plots, but I get the, the, the straight data in real time. It seems like a hell of a difference, the 15 to 57. What happened there that was so different? That's what I'm trying to figure out. We'd have to look back and go back through each run of the plots of the, the filters and look at the chlorine levels. And, that, and that's what I do in detail. That would be beyond the detail we'll get into here. But it's got a matter mostly to do with both how the, the chlorine changes yep. and how that organic carbon change, because that's the other precursor. So, yeah. it's a so you were making those. changes during September to get the October, November results. I was always changing the chlorine levels as I thought were needed. Okay. Sometimes they'd get away from me because it's not really steady because the flow is so low that it'll start taking the chlorine and suck it up and suck yeah. it up yeah. and it doesn't come out. So you say, I got to turn it up, got to turn it up. Oh, it looks really good. And then you go home and you watch it and it keeps going up. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. Mm. Well, so let's get it back down. I want to show you a case where that happened and what we got for samples. So I have a question. What? When you have like a really high reading and that flows into those pipes, is there any stagnancy with those chemicals? Like then when you take your next sample, you're still getting some flowing through the pipes? Or does anything stick to the pipes that no, is not much of this, flowing no. you through e e to kind of taint your samples going forward? Not really. No. It's, what we're getting is really what's in the storage tank at that time. Okay. Because we're flushing. I took a sample today from deep BP1. As Peter mentioned, the second site is only done quarterly. The first site's done monthly. I prefer both quarterly. I'd actually prefer one site, but the law says two. The law is normally thinking in a whole community, <laughs> not just one building. But no exception to that. But they did, did let us go down a quarterly. The reason they wouldn't stop the other site is it is quite variable. So they really wanted to see more. Then I get it that it's that variable. Um, maybe someday we'll get back to quarterly monitoring, but that'll be a little bit further. Um, but you did flow. You were starting to say you did ran it for a bit today to get that sample. Yes, yeah, so I, I went and turned that sink on and came back half hour later. Just leave a little note by so I'm, I'm flushing this sink and make sure the water's coming. Because nice. that's what you're supposed to do out in the distribution system. You don't want stagnant water from in the house. You, you want what's in the street pipes. So you flush that sink until you get what the right. company's providing, not what the customer's sitting there doing nothing. Right. We're doing lead and copper sampling this month. And some of those sinks, as I wrote about an hour ago to the state, hey, they haven't been used in months. I flushed them all today for a minute or two, but um, I may do it again. So let's move on to the next slide. Hey, trial and methanes, we're looking a little better here. And this is one, This you got your first notice on this in quarter three mm -hmm. from all these, these other higher numbers. So we're still in that state. Here's a case where we get the same pattern of an extra analyses that we did. In this case, while the storage tank is still similar to the, the school rooms, in this case, the effluent is a fair amount, is a bit higher than what's in the storage tank. And that happens every time coming from here down at these. That's because they don't biodegrade, they only get more. Once it's made, it's just going to stick around. They'll, they'll, they'll evaporate into the air, so they can go away that way. And if we needed to solve just that, I'd recommend putting a little, um, like, uh, basically a mixer, a stirring system at the top. An Almost look like a duck doing this. I think there's the word I'm looking for, an agitator to stir the water up. Put a little bathroom fan at the top of it and blow the air out, and you can get a lot of removal of those sitting in the tank. You can use the tank as a treatment system if somebody can get in and do those modifications. That doesn't work for the halocetic acids. 
they're, they're too, um, they like the water too much. They're charged, they're gonna stay in the water. <clears throat> so, a worst case. So one weekend, the uh, assistant operators who were there, they, they had, the chlorine was up pretty high, like one or 1.2. They didn't lower it because it was out of range. Should have, but didn't. Things are going better now. Um, I'm at home. I find that out. I got to run down and turn it off. But nobody's drinking the water. So I let it go for the night. Get in there the next day. Ended up emptying it out a fair amount of that water. But what I did do, like, okay, so we've got, oops, 2.3 milligram per liter coming out. Normally we want 0.2 or 0.3. We got 2.3 coming out when it stopped. So that water sat in the top of the tank for three days. Wasn't even in the green sand. So it's oxidizing iron, but just sat there making all the DBPs it could make. So it's sitting, just excuse me, Rich. It's yeah, no, sitting in the no. tank. It's not the storage tank. It's the yes. green sand uh, filter tank you're talking about. The green about. sand filter. The top above the, the filtration part. The top above the part. filtration media. Okay. There There's go. a few feet of space because you have to backwash. You have to have some room. So the water's got to get through there. What I did was started up the system, waited 10 minutes, enough time for that water to come through the media and come out. It was the worst sample I could get for disinfection byproducts. And these are the numbers. So we got a 202 for halocetic acid. Holy, holy heck, you know? And I show this in parks. If anybody gets these data, you'd have to know what's behind this to know what that means. That doesn't mean we failed. Yeah, we should have kept it lower that night. I was glad to get the experiment. And it was jumped on it. And then 15 minutes later, now we're getting water that had just come through fresh, freshly chlorinated. And it's down to night, like most of the water would be normally. It's down to 90. And but when it switched over the next filter, now I'm down to 50. So I, I can learn things from things like that. That does help. One last thing, throw in the PFAS, the per and polyfluoroalkyl substances. Um, I just did that because uh, well, we sample every month. And you'll see we've got 24 samples and never ended up above the limit, quarterly average at all. Only one sample at 20.4. So that's really not above 20 because you round it to the 20. Never had a sample 24. Um, it's expensive. Right now, the lab we use charges $350 a sample and you need a field blank. You might recall that the regional director of Mass DEP at the school meeting in May, when this board was there, at one point, she actually looked me directly in the eye across the room and said, I don't want to hear any more requests to reduce PFAS monitoring. Because we had requested that. Let's go down a quarterly. Look, we've got all these samples. Why do you need it every, every month? Um, I still suggest, I won't ask her, you can, but I won't again. But yes, I don't think monitoring monthly is needed. Why is that needed? All 12 samples have been 15 or below. Why are we spending that much money? Because they want to. It is very, I believe it's rare to monitor monthly. I looked, asked a lab to give us some prices recently. So I sent them the schedule, calls me up, says, is, is that true? Is that correct that you got a sample monthly for PFAS? That was actually the first question I was asked. So it must be pretty odd he sees these sampling schedules. And you said a blank. So what you're saying is we have to take a sample, but we have to take a separate control A control sample, sample as a blank. So we get, sent, we get a sample bottle, and I get a, another bottle with water in it that's PFAS free. Because we're dealing with these part per trillion levels. Yeah. And it's so sensitive, you're not supposed to have um, fabric softener on your clothes. I'm sure you did. You um, can't wear a rain jacket. There's one rule after another. It's, it's a whole bizarre thing. And why it's so, it could get so easily into the water and at levels that they detect, which are near the levels they're saying we shouldn't have, is a whole question as to why we're going. That's a whole other thing. But it's pretty expensive. It's 8400 a year right now. And I don't think we learn anything new by getting another, the next sample or two or three or four. So can we go down accordingly? Maybe if you guys want to ask or something. Well, what do other towns do? Do they do it? Oh, annual? mostly quarterly or annual. Yes, sir. Well, why, I, why are we doing it monthly then? Because we've been ratified. I, that's what she's asked. I mean, Peter and I actually emailed um, the water department woman that we work with, Mary Jo Pigsley, and so I can ask her and say if everyone else is doing this. She's not water department, actually. Oh, she is Department of Environmental Protection. She's the regional director. She's two levels above the water person, the drinking water person. So is it... Bob, Bob, Bob Bosco is the drinking yeah. water okay. chief. Sure. Then there's Mary L. Stone, who's the water chief. So that includes wetlands and 
ocean water and rivers. And yeah, all I'm saying is it sounds- well, Dr. Gullick, who should we ask? Is it Bob, Bob. Boswick or who should we ask about moving our, our testing to quarterly? Is it Bob oh, Boswick? Oh, it, it would go back. You can ask, I would ask Bob, but it'll go to Ms. Pinkston. Okay. 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 All right. It's just a money is thing. Is it possible just because we've been red flagged that they're making us do it so frequently? Possibly, it's also possible because of me personally. I'll explain that. I think they got a thing about me. Well, I know you all love it. That's on you. It comes out of your salary. <laughs> that's a good laugh. So we did that one day of colors in October, just to let you know. Um, it was fairly yellow. It was one of the days where the, the green sand, it kept going and going, and chlorine got high. And it, when it was differently like that, the backwashing that we were doing wasn't getting enough of it out. But we fixed it right away just as soon as we saw that. And there's still colored water, some in the storage tank, but we had just in one day. Didn't have metals results for it, but um, so what I did, we were running a lot of hoses trying to create the demand that the school does. And what happens, we'd bring this tank really far down at once, you know, all several, a couple of hoses. The potable at once. water tank. The potable water, the storage tank, thank you. Yep. I say tank, thank you, the storage tank. Um, and then what would happen is the green sand, which hadn't run in a while, would then run and run and run and run and run and run to fill the tank back up. And the chlorine wouldn't be steady, it would just keep going up and up and up. Um, and so we stopped doing that. We said, whatever water they use, they use. There's a couple staff there who turn out a bunch of sinks in the morning, that's most of the demand. At most, it's average 600, a little over 600 gallons a day last month. I guess. So I'm counting what we've used. I have a question. There. Is there a difference between the potable water tank that's outside the building and a storage tank that's inside a building? Is no, there no, is there a, a storage tank is there outside. a pre and an after? And it's not potable water yet because it's not Okay, so treated. that's okay. It's a storage tank. Gotcha. Hey, if you want to really cringe, we used to get the potable water from the sixty thousand gallon uh, <laughs> sprinklers. Uh, tank. I, I, I hear. So here's the storage tank right there. Then it, then it ends up in the pressure tank. So when gotcha. that <laughs> runs, the, the filter, the well pump runs, and thus the filters, when the level sensor says, hey, I want more water. Okay. And then it'll stop when it says, hey, I've had enough. Right now, I'm running it to go from about 3,000 gallons to 4,500 gallons. In the tank. In the tank. So that way, it also goes from one foot level to another. Um, we increased it a little bit when they started using the gym for basketball recently. And if they do more, I would change it yeah. you know, to keep adjusting it. How much? I don't want it too old, but I don't want to have too little if they come in with a quick demand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so that's the outdoor tank is that storage tank. Gotcha. It's not potable. But it's Once filtered prior to going into that outdoor it's tank. Goes, it, the yeah. metals are removed prior. Gotcha. Yeah. And then all the corrosion control is and the UV disinfection is done after it. As people, you open a sink, the water starts moving, that all starts pumping in. Okay. And that runs anytime somebody turns on a sink <laughs> or flushes okay. the toilet. This only runs every few once every few days because the flow is so low. Mm. So back to where I was. Take that on right um, we are considering alternatives for the automating the chlorine feed or at least giving a remote control. I haven't answered our technician yet on that. I'm waiting to hear what Chris McClure, the engineer, says because the engineer should have input on what the computer system is going to be even if I already know what I want. <laughs> Still gets, you know, help us shop, so to speak. Uh, they'll be starting soon with us. Um, I want to thank Scott and Matt and Denise at the school for all their help. Uh, been very, very helpful. And uh, I will mention, I had mentioned this opportunity we had a chance for um, with the Office of Research and Development from EPA, who had approached DEP to see if they could use Millville as a case study. EPA, when I contacted them, they said they are not moving forward with Millville. I can presume why, and I'll get back to that in a minute. That was disappointing. Um, Mass DEP. So what's the status of Mass DEP? Well, for quarter three, we had the public notice. It's already up on the door at the school. We had the maximum contaminant level violations for halocetic acid to try methanes. It's also on the town website, FYI. FYI. Okay, thank you. Including my transmittal email. Right. Which adds more explanatory information. Yes. It's in a perspective. Um, for this quarter, the current quarter, we definitely have violations and we'll definitely have a public notice. We're because averaging because for a year. of averaging. Yeah, we're averaging for a year. Yes. Oh, if it was just this quarter, we'd have passed both. Nice. So we had passing results for this quarter? Yes. Yep. 
Oh yeah. Well, we have since July for halo C gases have all been low, and the last two months for triolomethanes were below. And if you average, it would have been three months by averaging. But all the results for this last quarter are passing. Yep. Well, when it the one thirteen does not, but if you average those, I haven't added it up, but it should average under eighty. But it will not once you add those in. So that, that's where the numbers are compared to 80. For the trial methanes, the halo acetic acids, those are all below 60. I'm not saying every minute they're all below 60. So they, they are when the samples are taken. It's not, it's not very steady state. But if there's a lot of them, we're going to catch them. And again, by sampling the storage tank extra times, it's effectively the same as sampling in the school but without accounting as compliance. Right, right. And that's the purpose. That's why I call them experimental. So I do both filters and, and that storage tank effluent. Could any of these variables have to do with changing geology of the well or, or the actual water coming in in the first place? The water coming in has changed. As we saw, the total organic carbon and iron were high this time. I don't know what they are. I kind of don't care in that I'm controlling the chlorine coming out. So whatever it does, it can do whatever well, it's it It's hard does. to know what you're going to do at the end if you don't know what's happening at the beginning. I'm following the number coming out. I've got okay. it on a continuous monitor. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all I'm caring about. I, whatever it's waving on in the background, I mean, it matters, but not to me controlling this. Now, if you can give me advance warning and say, hey, you got to turn yeah, this up nice. in a couple of days, great. Nice to know. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to have that right. and put that effort into it. Um, so, next, so we'll have the violations, but we will not, for at the DBP2 site, that's the one we sample quarterly, mm -hmm. we will not exceed what's called the operational evaluation level, the OEL level. What that is, instead of the four quarters average for the OEL, they take the current quarter twice and then the preceding two quarters and average that. So it weights your current quarter. So since we were having a good quarter, in that case, we already had, because those samples were just November, they both, I'll call it passed, even though it's just a quarter sample. Um, so we don't have that OEL, which ends up being a report on what you're going to do and so on. It's kind of, it's their way of saying, hey, you may have a problem in the future. <laughs> yeah. Um, so watch out for it and you know, give us a report and what are you going to do about it. And you still do those when you have the MCL violation now. It's a good chance that at the other site, I think it's likely no guarantee that we will not have an OEL exceedance for HA5, meaning that calculation will be below the 60, and probably going to exceed the OEL for trial methanes at this other site, the one we do monthly. Um, we got a small chance to, not to get by that, but not too likely. If today's sample comes up at 47 or less, we'll have no OEL reports for the quarter, which should be pretty darn awesome. Um, it's so the next thing to mention, the narratives. I mentioned the narratives to this board the last time I was here. Uh, some of the other parties involved express narratives of the water science or potential public health impacts that I disagree with quite a bit. Um, one is the central region's position on how unhealthy this water is. The emphasizing the use of bottled water, requiring it, which I've never heard of. Um, and I haven't found anyone else who has heard of it, and I asked a lot of people at a national EPA meeting in Cincinnati in September if they've heard of that, including several high ups in EPA. No, haven't heard of that before. Doesn't mean nobody has, but I haven't heard of that. Springfield, I mentioned there, that the Western region approved, you can continue to use and consume your water as normal. So I encourage this board to, keep, to question DEP, why is it so different in Springfield? Why is Millville so different? Is ours really not that bad, or is it much worse in Springfield than is being told? Obviously, I have one opinion. Um, to, to me, that's a problem. And until these kind of things are challenged, I don't think the board, we're going to get as far as we need to get. Then there's this workshop. I went to this the workshop I went to in Cincinnati. It was a three-day conference. A lot of the top people from EPA, folks from all sorts of state agencies, that were there, um, and it had to do mostly with small systems. There was a, uh, some sessions on communicating risk. 
So they had a little panel discussion, <clears throat> mostly state regulators, EPA, and then I opened up for audience questions. Nobody asked. I stood up and asked, what do you do when you have a high-level state official who tells people they shouldn't cook with water because the halocetic acids are between 60 and 70 parts per billion? I asked that question a lot, but I asked it in public that day. The first response came from a, a regulator from Ohio EPA who said, well, that, that's a, that was an irresponsible thing to say. That was one of the nicer things I heard from people. I asked a lot of people at that conference, what did you think of that comment? And again, that was one of the nicer, so to speak. Mostly I got looks like, you know, like, what? You know, the, the, the phrase, it looks like me, like I'm from Mars. That's what it said. No one there thought it was reasonable to tell people, you can't cook with this water. The moment that problematic sentence was said by the regional director back in May, I cringed. And why did I cringe? Because halocetic acids are carboxylic acids. They have oxygen and hydroxyl group, groups that are very polar. It's ionic, meaning it's charged. It wants to stay in water. Trihalomethanes don't. They're neutral. They don't want to be in the water. They want to go into the air better or absorb into something absorbing into something. Halocetic acids will absorb into something. Mostly they want to stay in the water. So there's no way they're going to absorb that much into the possum. I guessed about maybe 10% at that moment and knew the math wouldn't show that it made sense to not cook with it. We later showed you last time it would take about 27 adult servings of spaghetti cooked in this water for at least water at 60 part per billion. And you have to do that, what does it appear for? Every day for 70 years, 27 adult sizes? So no, this is problematic. And the school's sticking with this. I heard this from a high up official today. Well, we can't cook with that water. Well, yes, you can. I explained part of this. Oh, but well, you have to agree to disagree. No, I do not agree to disagree. Be like uh, uh, agreeing to disagree, what two plus two equals. This is just, I'm sorry, the statement was wrong. Um, I hope Ms. Pisley isn't offended, but it made a huge difference to this community, and until that gets straightened out, I don't know how you, we win whatever we're trying to get done here. Um, so the big thing coming up next, and I'll take more questions before I got a last part, if I may. Um, I had a call in mid-October mid from uh, a representative from DEP, the one who represents for Millville. Uh, very nice to have her to call me. <laughs> I don't get too many calls from DEP, they avoid me, and I understand that. Um, but one thing that was mentioned was they won't allow an operational <clears throat> approach to be the solution. Because I'm telling them, I think we can do this. I think if you keep the chlorine in control, that's what all the previous data suggested. If you control that, we'll be okay. They said, no, that was already tried and failed. Uh, but we're going to have computer control or, and have online data and look at it. I mean, they had online data, we're going to be looking at the data and doing this, and it's different people. Well, it doesn't matter. Millville had their chance, they tried, they failed. I don't like that approach. This is your money they're talking about. I think you should have whichever option, right? Because the option they're pushing, as was mentioned in that call, is the pipeline interconnection. And that's been pushed a lot. Um, so the idea that... If $4 million, we can do that. We've already spent two, we might as well keep going. No, well, this is up. That's not my decision, but I think that um, the town should, have, as long as they comply with all the regulations to sell this, should have your option. I think there's been pressure to move toward the, the pipeline, and that's in some other directions with that. Any questions on the technical aspect before I wrap up here? No? Okay. Well, some of it looks good. Again, not necessarily, so I took all those samples today. Once again, all the compliance samples. Hopefully I'll have most everything back within the week. Um, learning how to get them back quicker. That's been one of the things slowing me down as the lab would take weeks to get me results. Yes, sir. Um, just out of curiosity, mathematically, what do you figure, would it be a Q2 event where we'd finally clear the hurdle of wiping off the previous tests uh, so that the, when you use the quarterly average on that do you need to get to q2 of Wait. next year to be able before you can try to get to that spot yeah. i haven't based on, based I figured on that the might average. come up but i hadn't calculated all the work i did this weekend but i did calculate those operational evaluation levels as to when we get out um tell you what we can do though really quickly get your calculator no 
<laughs> no, you can do it though. But we're we're looking at this. So we probably have to get maybe past first quarter. Again, that's that, saying a Q two event would be one that you think you might be able to be okay with. You got to have an entire year of good results. Right? I'm I'm not going to make a prediction, but we're ahead of schedule on the OELs. I would say. And we didn't have a passing test this past quarter. And we didn't have one in the summertime, so. Um, July and True. August, which were summer, True. these are these are all and good we're, numbers. And we're tracking, what, 100,000 mm -hmm. so far? Um, the, combined on this, trying to fix this water solution? On a cost basis, yeah. This one here, pass, or we'll, we'll just call it pass, even though it's not pass, but it was under six, it was under 61, it was 60 or less. Could have probably trucked water for 60 to 80. So actually, this one, does that all average under 60? Uh, it's really close. Well, it's, <laughs> we missed on this one. I was just curious. That's all to see if, you know, when, when would it okay, affect it to the point where we'd say, hey, these we're kid, clear now. These kids aren't coming back next year. At this point, we missed. M my opinion is that you, you may be in that gray area of getting into that spot. That's why I asked the question. Yeah, no, I agree. You're going to get to a point where it's not going to be you're still going to have the violation, and that's going to cause us to hold up again. Yeah. No, I agree with you, Jerry. It's getting, it's getting in that, that gray the area. It's in the bubble there. Four quarters, if we get another 41 and 42, that would put it at 33. And what about so, these? What are these for? They are... But the issue is, is you're, you're going to have to show, in order to get reg right. the regulatory difference, like for you to make that call and right. say, hey, can we test less? You're going to have to say, hey, can we test less? Because our last 20 tests have been this. Yeah, we're not so getting less. so we're get... not getting to the point where we have an argument to allow them to let us test less. Not on Correct. DBPs. I think you do on the PFAS. Right? That's right. the bigger cost. So, yeah. So the if we have one more, if December it looks like October, November, the average for the last year is 33 which is well below 60. Well, you know what does this, this site should pass next quarter in January or the, in March because we get rid of the 115 right. and we get something else. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. This one, um, we have to get rid of all these. But that right. averages to somewhere near 100. So we'd have to factor that into the average of this and the average of this. So right. that's a good calculation that I will do. Yeah, I think it's important actually, because that'll give you a direction well, as to whether that's a, a flex or not. I was more interested in the OELs. My spreadsheet does calculate what we need to pass in the next quarter. I always calculate yeah, that. But you have to be regularly in compliance to ask mm -hmm. for oh, lenience on your compliance yeah. numbers. Not asking to change this one. I'm not. But, no, he's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's different, different. So this one... To be clear, the amount of testing that's required for this number, we will continue to do. Yeah, absolutely. And our number is well below the 60. It's 33. So I don't think we should be saying the kids aren't coming back next year. That's an irresponsible thing to say based on... Oh, we don't know what they're going to do. And let, let me, I don't agree. Any other technical questions? No. Won't you get but the average? you want to ignore the science, Rich. I mean, that's what the number is. Well, speaking Just of... be like everybody else. Let's ignore facts. That comment about that. So let me opine a moment. So that was a scientific presentation. Now I'm going to speak truth to power. I think that's the phrase. So I say that's all, folks, and I mean that in a few different ways. Um, I've asked Peter to find a replacement for me, um, hopefully by the end of the month, as operator. I've accomplished most of what I set out to do. I didn't come in to be the permanent operator for Millville. It was never my intent. I stepped in to help out in an emergency when the previous operator quit with less than two days' notice. And I don't want to play this game anymore. It's ridiculous. So let me explain what I mean by that, if I may. I don't mean game lightly, but it's kind of how it feels. School leadership, they stick to a fairly uninformed and unrealistic perspective of water quality and alleged public health effects. That's my view. Um, it's not the same water science reality as my world. It's just not. It's not, not stuff what I'm used to. They've not seemed like truth seekers, um, seem to have their own alternate facts. Some have been hostile, and they're stuck on the beaver, darn beavers as far as I know. Despite all the scientific evidence and mass de DEP declarations, there's no problem. I spoke recent, uh, briefly today when I went in looking at a sink for sampling to the assistant superintendent, mentioned this earlier, saying he couldn't cook with the water and said, we'll just have to agree to disagree. We didn't talk much further, but no, I'm not agreeing. Position you can't cook with this water is just not founded in science. We've been through that math. Um, School leadership, they're going to believe what they want to believe, is my opinion at this point. Um, 
I didn't see a reason to move the children out in the first place. I was it based on the cooking concept, maybe. Um, but they had been there using the drinking water. I question whether that's needed or not, but another story. Um, so I don't get that. Um, they're in a tough spot now. I insist that, you know, again, I didn't think by this water the children needed to be moved out. If they want to drink the water or not, that's anybody's personal prerogative, right? Mm. But you can certainly flush with this water. You can certainly cook with it. One of the school leaders was actually saying you can't wash hands with it. Where'd that come from? Who said that with an authority or with credentials? It had no meaning. It had color. It, has color. it had color with manganese, which is a human nutrient. And by the way, the health standards for manganese are really similar to, I mentioned this before, I think there's, the health standards are similar to the health requirements. So you look a little closer to that health limit that Massachusetts has and what it says in the fine print under the table. These limits correspond to the, um, you know, the necessary intake, and we're sure that you're okay there. We don't know what happens above it. They're not saying they're not using it above that. They're just saying they didn't know. <clears throat> you know, so I don't, want, I, I don't want to spin my wheels trying to appease a group being a school leadership who's not shown interest in what's true about their water. Um, DEP, they're, they're focused on all sorts of nitpicky compliance enforcement to the letter. Well, I don't think supporting us to succeed. I mentioned the monitoring costs, the troublesome inconsistencies. How is Springfield? It's okay, but not here. Um, the comment about the pasta. Um, and I, th you know, I feel that they seem to have squashed our hope to participate with the EPA research project. Again, though, the scientists didn't, if they came to DEP, that meant they were interested. But they're not doing it, so you can make, uh, draw your own conclusion as to why you didn't get that opportunity. Um, that kind of took the wind out of my sails, because that was going to be very helpful and lead us to the PFAS. But if you didn't have that free work to help you figure out how to do the PFAS, maybe that pushes you to the pipeline, maybe. Um, I also think MassDEP, they seem to have it out for me a little bit. Might be because of the expose I wrote about them a year and a half ago and, and distributed about <clears throat> their ineptitude, deception, and waste and oversight of Massachusetts drinking water systems. I've been their, their um, boogaboo for a while mm. because I stand up for what is true and proper. When I see my communities bow down to what the DEP says when it's not true, they always end up in trouble and spending a lot more money. So my clients, they need to stand up to DEP when it's right to do so. I respect the authority. I just don't, the, the decision sometimes they have problems with. <clears throat> um, and that included a case study of Millville also, by the way, which didn't say much at the time, it was more about the costs <laughs> of the, the monitoring mostly. Um, the town. Uh, Peter and I, we had a well-balanced approach to DEP that seemed to be working. Um, that was changed by the board chair some earlier this year. We have some different direction and different approaches. Um, I believe the chair's been following the regional director at DEP a fair amount, lots of regular communication, trying to please her. Um, not necessarily standing up for the sound science that I think like about the pasta comment, what I believe the town needs. Um, I've asked the town to object about the pasta comment. It hasn't happened. When, so if, if the, no, I'll get back to that. The, I'm almost done. Uh, so <clears throat> is, is the board afraid to question DEP? What would happen? Would they retaliate? Would they hold back the grant? Why can't we question that statement if there's so much evidence it's not true about the cooking or you know, isn't well-founded? Um, I didn't feel that the town lobbied enough to, EP, or to the DEP on the EPA project, because the focus was on, in the conversations, my understanding is on getting the engineer hired to look at the, the pipeline business. Um, and then the town hired the engineer to do the pipeline connection, but not the treatment plant yet. Got that signed a month, you know, a few weeks later, a month later. But if the engineer's working on the pipeline project now, how does it help us with this school issue while the school leadership are waiting for a decision? And so I think not having the engineer, one, we couldn't get him to sign any contract for months because he's busy, everybody's busy. Um, so, so that was tough. Um, this business, it's all about, is it 61 PPB or 60 PPB? Because if it's 60, nobody'd hear a word. If it's 61, now they want to move my kids out of the school. 
or we get a 2.1 versus a 2.0. We got a 2.1 the other day and had to rush down and collect a sample immediately and get a confirmation. Um, and then we get calls from the lab with all six of unfortunate results, alarm texts at all hours, and I'm checking remote, regular remote checks of the data. We, we have to be available to solve problems, conduct repeat sampling, and do all that with the school leadership and DEP. And, and the position here, is, it's been all rather difficult. There's just too much drama. It's good water. It's good water. Treatment system does a fantastic job removing the very high concentrations of iron and manganese. You, nobody drinks the water except me. <laughs> That's all. It's a lot of a pining, but I don't mean to give too much of a scorched earth, but until this narrative has changed as to how horribly, horribly unhealthy that water is, I don't see how we have the progress that we want. Does anybody really believe that if we get down to 60 parts per billion, everything's okay, and we can drink the water and cook with it? But when it was at 62 or 68 or 70, we have to move the kids to another school? I don't believe that. And I think I'm in enough trouble, so I'll stop there. <laughs> Next step, so Rich. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, right now we have remote monitoring. We don't have remote control, and that's where the engineer and the technician that's where the technician solutions comes in. will that's that's sort of our next steps I, I for using this forward, system but we'll consult right. with the engineer now that he's on staff right. if he didn't right. sign the contract last week i'd have already sent my email with my order right right <laughs> but since that was coming right. I, let's talk to him right and you you prefaced earlier about you know like the investment before past performance is no indicator of the future performance so have to say that. the challenge for the school leadership is somewhere in the next several months, they have to make a decision in their budget process mm -hmm. as well as in their planning process about bringing the kids back or not. And for that, they, they need some confidence that the system functions in the duration for which the system will need to be used. And I say that, you know, depending on what happens with the pipeline multiple years out or whatever um, and, 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 and I'm going to ask you to also talk about um, a bulk water as well a little bit if you could I don't mean to put you on the spot on that but no, it's okay. bulk water but, is a fine idea you might save money yeah okay we'll get back to that but in terms of the, 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 yeah. the well, well, well you yeah, have, no. but, but if I could just finish if you you have the you have confidence in the ability to manage the system, particularly with added tools of remote uh, control. Is that a Confidence, fair statement? not a guarantee. But not a guarantee. Okay, Confidence that's, that's kind of what I just want to get that distinction for the decision makers in the school leadership, you know, for them to have a better understanding. They, you have facts. We show science. Peter, my conclusions don't seem to matter to them nor my credentials. They made that very clear in public meetings, no less. Um, I give the data. So I'm leaving it at that, because decide from there. I'm kind of curious. Yes, sir. Let me ask, and you did make a comment that DEP seems to be kind of doing their own thing. They don't respect you. Is, is that the issue? Oh, I'm not sure. Where's the friction? Where's the friction? Where do you think it is? Where's it come <clears throat> from? Well, between you and the DEP. Oh, it, it started in November in 2018, my first DEP meeting uh, for the township of Monroe. I went into the office. I was working for RCAP Solutions at the time. Went in the office and explained that the surface water disinfection violation they had imposed on them was not correct. They'd miscalculated it. Right. And that director called up my boss after that meeting, oh, all right. et cetera. Okay. And every time, everything I object to just gets okay. everything's. You can go on my website. No, that's fair. No, no, no. Take no, a no, look no. at that if you that's want to fair. hear what those it's stories fair. are. Yep. So, so it's fair to say they're not going to send you a Christmas card. This year. Yes, sir. I'm not on the list. I have a few fans there, all right. but not too too many in DEP. So I is is he leaving, staying, going? Waiting for someone to come in. Where are we at with that whole swirl? Woody, Woody, are you contemplating leaving us doing what you're doing? I would rather the circumstances were different. Me too. Are you going to be leaving us in terms of? I'm hoping to not be the operator for too much longer. Time frame. It's, it's taxing in terms of. I mean, you kind of gave your resignation speech. Yeah. Kind of. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I won't see you yeah. again. But no, I don't strand you guys. Yeah. I didn't do it before. I'm not doing it now. 
I'd like to see the data come out. Um, so you're going to stay on board for the next two months or so? I did. I made no commitment in okay. terms of that. Um, we'll see what we can come up with. Because we, I couldn't find any other operators either. But again, anyway, I, I, I explained some of that. It's, I didn't get the support I, needed, I wanted and needed, I think, from the town. The school district is a whole other story, and DEP is them. I mean, why keep, uh, I'm just swimming uphill with all of this. Um, not to mention, yeah, I get, I'm a little old to get all the texts at home, and I don't mind that too much, but, you know, alarms and jumping on this and that. So, but I'm straightening things out, um, create a lot of good files. Uh, I'm trying to train the other operators <clears throat> for available to keep this running. Um, get the system set up and get the new computer stuff in. We'll see what happens with time. Now that I have said all this tonight, who knows how I'll feel? Is it, you know, <laughs> I don't call it that necessarily, but something like that. But I feel these things need to be said. If we don't get to the bottom of this, where are we going to go? How would I convince the school to move the kids in? What is what are the criteria? I don't think that's clear. Passing data. I think it's simple. I think if you sat down the superintendent with passing data and actual passing quarters, I think we'd have something to stand on. But until then, we got nothing. How do you go in and argue with the superintendent and say, well, I'll believe us in good faith. The water's going to be fine when they're just not. You know, I don't numbers. because they didn't agree it was I, fine when it was fine. I don't, I don't think so. so. I'm, not, I'm not going down that road trying to convince anybody i think the superintendent you know I'm, I'm speculating here i think the kids got moved out one because we lost our water operator because we didn't pay the bill and two the, the quarter they just they failed you the didn't lose failed. your operator because you didn't pay the bill uh, I don't know. for other reasons i don't know i, I that i mean like i said that's all speculation so i don't know yeah. but, uh, he, he been back, you know, going we've back now determined that the water is the responsibility of the town and not the school district so we've settled that debate that debate, there's a financial debate, yes, sir. Yeah. So, um, Dr. Gillick, would it be fair to say that your departure will not precede a full transition to a new water operator? Is that fair? I mean, I, I don't want to say necessarily anything. Okay. Depends on how we, you know, everything goes and can't We have a transitional solution identified. We don't know if it's executable. Right. Is I think a fair statement, right? Yeah. And, we're trying to figure a different option. That's what we're. What doing. are your personal goals and objections for the rest of your time here? Goals and my goals are to get the water as good as we can in a sustainable manner. Get but, that. What, but what is the the price point, if you will, of the of the water being as good as it can get? What is your what is your data point to be as good as it can get? Oh, I need the control of the chlorine remotely or automatically. And once we do that, then we're pretty much there. So, and with that, we'll have better ability to control the chlorine in the right level. And we do need to see it go a little longer to make sure the manganese doesn't come flying out. But boy, it looked good today. It was pretty clear coming out of those filters. Okay, so you think you're on a stable track right now. You just want to see some more data points along the way. I do. To make sure that it stays at that yeah. even level. I'd like to have it in good shape to hand over to somebody. Okay. Absolutely, including with better control of the computer. Um, but yeah, if, again, oh, how, uh, you have to be so dedicated, it's not that I'm not dedicated, obviously I am. Right. Um, and I guess my it, next question is, what is the consequences of not reaching that goal? Oh, if we don't reach then what? the goal, which goal specifically? Of, of keeping the water levels at a... Well, then we would have to do a, a capital and, improvement project such as putting in activated carbon, or the trihalomethane aeration, or um, switching to permanganate. Not my favorite choice, but possible. There's a, ways to do this that are a little more expensive and require changes to the system. I mean, I, I, guess, I guess my disconnect here is I've been involved politically since this first came to be, since okay. we were pulling water off that 60,000 gallon tank, before there was filtration, before there was any of that. And since then, the town has spent over $2 million on water at that school. So at what point do you say, wait a second, we got to stop throwing good money after bad and come up with a completely different solution and try something else? With hindsight's obviously a great Of view. course. With, but with hindsight? I'm talking about throwing good money after bad. Understood. Cut, cut bait and move forward with something else. That's up to the town. Um, one thing Peter mentioned was bulk water 
Would the state let you do bulk water until you put in a pipeline? If you're putting in a pipeline, well, who knows? But you'd have to get really committed with the pipeline, is my guess. Um, you said the bulk water would end up being cheaper than the operation. Might, it should probably be cheaper. Okay. Yeah, okay. Close with it. We didn't well, ask Matt's DEP yeah, if you were bulk no. water, and she said no. But they right. said, well, I don't think she said no, but there was some language in there. That was just a hard no. no. Those are hard no. Absolutely not. Oh, those are absolutely It's a no. temporary we got thing. A hard no. We got that in writing. Hard no. We got that in writing. But is that a hard no, knowing that there's a there's a grant or whatever in place for a pipeline? Maybe that's a different conversation. Or we can file it. Yeah, for sure. The other thing that she mentioned and Dr. Not a fan of the solutions that permanganate, um, because they're based on the chemistry there. And Dr. Oak, please correct me if I'm wrong. There'd be no. Um, disinfection byproducts. So these other issues go away. None but potentially pink water. Uh, uh, and, and let me tell you, when it's pink, it's like unicorn pasta pink. It's very, very pink. <laughs> and there's a good chance of that. And so that's... It's a non-starter. I've mentioned yeah. that happened to me twice in yeah. Charlottesville. No, it's when like... The operators did something wrong and pink water went to town. Yeah, it's pink, it's, 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 it's pink slushy. Look I mean, I, mean I guess I'm a, I'm a goals and objectives kind of guy. Like, I want to know what the goal is, and then if that goal can't be met, then, then what? My goal is to do what I can do with this, which involves the next step of getting control of the chlorine. Okay. Doing experiments, making sure I understand the level of where I want the chlorine. Okay. Get that level right. Yeah. Um, and we can go and actually increase it for a little bit and kind of recharge the filters and then bring it down for the rest of the month. We can do that. There's many different ways to run this system. Mm -hmm. um, the, just letting it chill and do its thing and getting the right running frequency <clears throat> seems to be doing okay lately. Um, get yeah. a different flow rate, a much different flow rate, and have to prove it again. Well, it's all risk reward. I mean, if, if you change things, it could make it worse. Oh, or if you change things, it could make it better. Or, but if you find a good status quo and then continue that for X amount of quarters, and then you can present that to the people and say, look, we figured it out. This is where we're at. Oops. We've regulated it. And from, and from this point forward, we know what we need to do. Pretty much where we are, need the chlorine control, want to see more months of trihalomethanes. I think five months of haloacetic acid since July is pretty, pretty, pretty good. good. And that. Uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm happy. That thing's a little more problematic at the moment. <clears throat> um, but no, so I, I want to get a certain certain distance up here. And I'll figure something up, but I don't want to do this for another year or two while the school tries to figure out what to do. You couldn't afford it anyways. We are decreasing costs. I have made many fewer trips to Millville um, in November. That's early December, but I'm trying to keep those costs down. And seeing the da data remotely is huge. So you have to be there for hours watching mm -hmm. it run. Mm -hmm. So I can just watch it at home. So as long as we keep everything running, I can do most of my work from home. Okay. Um, and we're looking for other cost reduction measures in the future. That's a standard process. And part of the first things I did was to look at all the monitoring program and how expensive that was. And we still look at that. So you guys are in a tough spot. I get that. I hope I didn't hurt too many things. Okay. Thank you, guys. Appreciate the questions. And yep. Again, I, I do have good ideas in here, and we're going to share, share so much of that tonight, but okay. control the chlorine, get the right levels, um, and I'm running it lower than we used to, because mm -hmm. it's working. <laughs> Whatever works. It's working. Any other questions for Dr. Gillick? Okay. Thank well, you for the opportunity to see you in person, and um, should be back sometime. Yeah. Okay. No, thank you, Dr. Gillick. We'll talk you. Thank you, Peter. Thank you all for that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that leaves everything. We're down to number seven, public forum. And we actually have public forum here. Any questions? Yeah, come on up. All right. Well, I had a couple, but only one would come to mind right now. Okay. Meta comment. Yes. We left our current dispatch system to save money. Mm -hmm. We were paying about 50 grand a year. Mm -hmm. Now it's at 120. Yep. So I'm thinking that Meta Comet wasn't a really big savings of money. So is there, are there other options for that? Or should we be researching other avenues to dispatching? Um, you know, I mean, we're, it just, it doesn't make any sense to have tried to save money and now we're paying more than double. Yeah. 
How Tom? many years have we been in Metacomet? Just three years? Two, two plus years. But you know, we, we were sold for that. Oh, for the first couple years, we won't pay anything. But what wasn't presented was, and then what? Because now we're way backwards. Peter, any thought? I, Peter's on the Minicom board. I'm not as familiar. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, I, 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 I don't know if I would describe it the way Paul just described it, but uh, it was certainly w State 911 pushed very hard to get Millville and Menden, which previously were in a regional dispatch relationship mm -hmm. yep. for which State 911 had provided some funding when that was created, I know I went and to that funding years. was going away, right? That funding was going away mm -hmm. and was going to start increasing. So I couldn't tell you what, if we were still in the steady state of uh, Menden Millville mm -hmm. dispatch, what we'd be paying today would be a lot more than what we paid so far with Metacomet. So that was one of the key drivers for the ch then chief to bring to Millville uh, into the Metacomet system but i'm and just not seeing the choice. payback like i'm not seeing the payback to making a well, change like well, that well i don't know that you can put a payback you have to have a dispatch they have provided all the equipment they're going to get us a new tower right but it doesn't uh, help that we're paying an even distribution of what six different towns we're, we're not paying we're, even so tiny. We're, we're we're paying uh based on call volume and population so not an even distribution that's right. how they do it for the uh uh, I could have sworn the, the contract showed no, that it was no. an even distribution. No, 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 no. So, you know, Foxborough's, uh, uh, the Foxborough plant, they are split amongst, I think it's four towns right now, okay. evenly. Okay, that's the way they did it. We, we're based principally on population. So we're 4% of the cost of Metacomet. And that's $120,000? Yes, yeah, that's it's, a a, large, it's not, geez, it's a large you know, it's show. a big dispatch. Um, but if you if you were to do dispatch here, you know, if you had to man a 24-7, 365 dispatch for the town of Millville, imagine the cost of that. Be about $175,000. No, it wouldn't. It would be it'd be four hundred grand. Easy. It would. Okay. So so but anyway, so we're gonna be paying sixty grand for a couple of years starting in FY twenty mm five, -hmm. right? And then we'll get the full whack after that. Mm. And by then, I don't know what state, like state 911, having sat in meetings where discussions of merging with the SEMRAC, which is the Foxborough one, mm -hmm. those discussions can, are continuing. It's probably a 10 year process should that succeed. State 911 doesn't want to direct it. They don't want to, like, if you look at counties throughout the country, you know, there's county dispatches and those seem to work. We don't have that here. And State 911 likes the idea of these, the, the, the communities coming together the way they have in, um, you know, regional dispatches. And they funded that as incentives, but it's not forever funding, mm -hmm. as we see. The, the thing that they don't do is they're not <clears throat> pulling the strings or pushing directions too much except by way of funding. They're letting the communities sort it out how they work together mm -hmm. and what other groups come in. So <clears throat> for Metacomet, one of the things recently done by Metacomet was trying to get funding to expand the capacity of Metacomet by doubling the capacity and bringing in additional communities, which then would trigger an additional round likely of state 911 funding for all involved, because that's what happened when the two towns came into the four towns of Minnesota. So you're anticipating that a further, <clears throat> a future merger is going to redistribute might, our might, cost might, a little bit. Might allow for some reduced costs in the future. Okay. I don't know that for sure, okay. but that seems to be the historical pattern that has been followed. And that's something that you're monitoring closely so, on that? Well, as close as uh, the information allows, yeah. Okay. yeah. So my next point is... Now we're we're throwing the the word override around. Um, it's been the position of a of a lot of people in town and some on this board even uh, that an override is terrible. It's bad. You've you've put that out. You've you've ingrained that in people's minds. Well, an override is inevitable. 
And the problem is you've now tainted the viewpoint of the benefit of an override. It's the responsibility of the Board of Selectmen to put together a marketing campaign for something like an override. That is the responsibility of the Selectmen to ask for it and market it and campaign for it. And if you don't have a unified group here, how are you going to campaign for something that the town needs? Again, my opinion of the Board of Selectmen is that the Board of Selectmen is elected to be responsible for making decisions or making recommendations, because it's not really your decision, making recommendations that are in the best interest of the town overall. And I understand being sensitive to certain groups of people that can't their, pay their taxes and whatever. Millville is very cheap to live in tax-wise. Our surrounding towns are absolutely ridiculous in comparison. And our, the, the difference between our current levy and our levy ceiling is almost 100%. We're collecting $5.6 million and our, our net difference is $5.3 million. There are other towns in this commonwealth that are, that are skirting the line of that levy ceiling. And I'm not saying that it should go up that high, but, but to send out a, a survey and say, hey, would you like to have an override? Who wants to have an override? That's a stupid question. Uh, no offense, but it's a stupid question. It's, the question may be, you know, if, if the need is presented appropriately, would you consider voting for an override? It's, it's the same question, kind of, but it's approaching it from a different perspective. It's approaching it from, this is what the town needs. If this is what the town needs, we're gonna tell you this is what the town needs, and maybe, maybe we all get together with the accountant and put together some scenarios of what that looks like, what that looks like for each individual household, the median household, whatever, at different levels. The way, I mean, uh, some of you probably know how an override works, so I, if I'm, just no, speaking to the crowd, um, you can't put together an override that will cover your operating expense for this year. Right. So, so no matter what you put together for an override, the town can only levy what is appropriated at town meeting. So let's say you put a million dollar override, but this year you need $300,000 to operate. That's all that's going to be levied per household. But what that does is it gives you an, a levy capacity. So we saw on the tax classification hearing that right now our excess levy capacity is $25,000. The difference between that and if you have an override in place is that levy capacity is going to be $600,000 or the excess levy capacity. And that money only gets appropriated when the townspeople vote for those items, the things that they believe the town needs to operate. You can't keep shaving budgets and, and pulling money away from the departments, expect them to operate effectively and efficiently, and then say, nah, well, it doesn't matter. We'll, we just, this is all we have, so this is, all we, this is all we can give. You need to look at it from the perspective of this this is what the town needs. And you know what, townspeople? We've looked at it. We've done the numbers. We've run the numbers. If you want the town to operate at certain levels, this is what the town needs to operate for public safety, for uh, protection of assets, for collection of revenue. Those were always the three things that, that in the past we put as priorities. The ability to collect money, to, to produce and collect money, the health and safety of the residents, and the protection of our assets. And instead, we chose to not increase our revenue and sold off some of our assets that now we have significantly less of. So what did we really accomplish there? And, and I'm not saying I wanna pay more taxes, no. I'm not at that median number, you all know where I live. I'm above the median number, I'm gonna pay more. And if that's what it takes to 
maintain the operation of the town, you can't have less than one, per one person in every position. That's why when you walk in, there's only five or six people in here. You can't have less than one person in a position. You need, you, there, the town has needs. And unfortunately, it falls to the selectmen to put out the request for an override, to sell the override, to present all the information, to have the vote. That falls to, to you guys. And again, you know, nobody wants to pay more taxes, but you know what? The, you know, it is what it is. I mean, you know, the, it's people are making decisions and changes in their lives in all other towns, too. It's not just Millville. So unfortunately, that's what it, what it comes down to is you need to make choices. You need to make decisions. You need so, to make sure that the, that the town is going to operate. You know, what's the goals for the town? Maybe that's a survey question. What are, what do you, how do you see this town progressing? Uh -huh. Do you see a new municipal building? Do you see better roads? Do you see, you know, and I mean, I know you alluded to that on some of your past surveys, and, and that was great, but like, what's the future of the town? What is our business? Our business is not to stuff money in the savings account. Our business is not to shave the budgets to stay within that two our business is to operate the town at the level that the town needs to operate so in the sur that's why we actually held the survey back so we had to review a prior meeting and um jerry actually made the suggestion like to make sure we meet with the department heads but then in the description will be like what this means is that the police department will be operating at blah 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 blah. okay what this means for fire with this increase fire now operates at blah 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 okay so there will be the information in there um and then actually my husband suggested the same thing you did is put in the average cut, like put in what's mm -hmm. the average home price. And then, so if we were to increase by this much, this is what it means to you, but this is what you get for it. Right. So, um, so and that's why uh, I think we need to separate like override from those other general questions. Cause I think there's gonna be so much information right. that we need to share. Um, and I think the water project and the school project, I think those are kind of separate. I agree. Those are I debt exclusions. Those are that's Yes, it's going to increase taxes, but that's really that's really a a preference kind of need. That's them having to market it. Mm -hmm. You have to market the override part. Right. They have to market the debt Their exclusion. Own. Correct. So Agreed. so t you don't even need to get involved in that, really. Two questions, if I may. Mm -hmm. Two questions. One, when have you ever seen the government not use all the money it's been given? When, when has that ever happened? If we increase the levy by a million dollars, that'll have to be filled every year it never won't be but that falls to you and the finance committee to, to sell that if at a town meeting for appropriations okay okay the next question is when have you seen a department lose students for 10 years and increase its budget and and honestly andrew you and i are on the same page on that because that has been the biggest ball and chain yeah. For our town, for God knows how long. So the test scores have gone down, the population has gone down, and the cost has gone through the roof. So how can you define? How can you def, uh, justify increasing a budget when you have a budget, the largest budget, increasing each year and then decreasing in its students for over ten years? And unfortunately, the DESC in the joint meeting that we all had, God knows how long ago, um, basically said. If that's what the townspeople want, that's what the townspeople get, and you got to pay it. Yeah. And I asked the question. You were there. Mm -hmm. I asked the question. I said, well, what if we write the check and there's no money in the account for it to clear? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, then you'd be pioneers because that's never happened. I'm like, <laughs> seriously, pioneers, that's the best you can do? I mean, honestly. Mm -hmm. So, it, it, I mean, you, it, it was a ridiculous meeting. It was, it was glad handing of the DESE and... We called them in to give us help on regulating the school so we don't get killed every year, and they did nothing of the sort. Yeah. So that's why we talked about in the budget guidance letter for the school to be like, you need to hold the line. Like, mm -hmm. that's where we are. Um, and we, like, at our town meeting, we may be able to do that. It's the super town meeting that I'm not mm -hmm. sure that we can hold the line. Well, I'll tell you, from, from what I've seen and talked to people that live in our neighboring town 
um, people aren't too happy with the taxes the going increase. through the roof yeah. and the increases and stuff. I've talked to so, people about that too. So there might be a swing shift happening. Okay. So I don't know if you know, like way past history, even before I got on the finance committee, um, it was the opposite. Millville was very generous and Blackstone was broke. It wasn't until they put that power plant in yeah. and you know had a huge influx, huge new growth you know, new growth numbers and, and that, that they kind of became the powerhouse. Prior to that, it was Millville, hey, we're going to pay this much towards the school and we'll do an additional additional contribution. And then Blackstone was like, oh, my God, we can't afford the additional contribution. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there might be a shift back to that. Okay. Well, we can. So, uh, you know. So I think we're all sort of agreeing. I know Andrew's I think so. That, um, so we'll definitely provide more detail. If you want to come to the, it'll probably be the January 8th meeting. We'll review oh, the survey. The oh, lucky. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you anyway. So, but no, but absolutely. If anyone oh, has input oh, on the oh. survey, so, but um, <laughs> no, if you want to drop me an email, I'd be happy to send it to you to review. Same thing all with right. you, Jerry, if you want to take a look at it. Right. But we have to get the inputs from the other department heads and then, and then, and to be clear, that's the question we should be asking. Like, so we're gonna increase it this much and it means whatever, three more full-time police officer, two more full-time firefighters, right. two full-time paramedics. And know. I will make one more observation yeah. because I was a human resources director and I learned how to read people really well. There's not one person sitting in this room that is sorry that he's leaving. <laughs> so that was my final observation. Okay. I'm gonna miss the 89 slides. Yeah, and the two hours of talking about all this. This one wasn't bad, though. This was only 12. 12, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was a lot of conversation. But thanks for hearing me out. In. Yeah, I no, that. as always. Everyone is welcome to speak at Board of Select Meetings. Jerry, come on, step up. You're in the hot seat. Yes. Jerry Finn, 47 Grove Street. Um, just to answer Peter's question, Peter had asked, you know, the, uh, the um, schools that are like the BVTs, the... Norfolk Aggies, things of that nature. I, I share this with everybody. Great, thank you. Um, the the idea of it comes out of this, Pete. Um, there's um, there will be the same amount of students. Okay. Now uh, I don't know why other schools can't do this. We capture that, and they have to be in by a certain time. Um, that's just the way we we work it. Uh, there's all deadlines on things have to come in. Uh, could an extraordinary circumstance take place where uh, a student would come in? It could happen. Mm -hmm. Hasn't. Okay, so my point is, as far as BVT goes, BVT is actually, it'd be better if the kids went to BVT and not to other schools because of the fact that BVT is less cost. Because you're only 2% of the total budget. So the idea of it is BVT will not impact your budget. The only way it could possibly impact it would be an operational cost, which we haven't, we're on the, I'm on the, the, the um, value of that now to see what kind of increase we're gonna have there. There, there was no capital cost last year, zero, zero capital cost. And this is the last year that we have the 20 years from when we did the expansion. Like 12 grand or whatever it is. That's yeah. gone, okay? Yeah. So yeah. you clean slated it. And I'm only telling you, you get the same amount of students. Same number of students. So it's really like last year, the operating costs were up 8%, if I remember correctly. Somewhere not for B BMR. Somewhere yeah. on, uh, around BMR, there. not for BVT. Right. Uh, even BVT. No, I it think wasn't you were so. in there. No, it wasn't. Close. Uh, I mean, I can look at it, but. Anyway, I, I, if it goes up that way, that's where the cost increase. So it's not tw the same number times 3% because it's the same number of students. It's whatever the percentage, our allocation based on, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. your assessment right. methodology right. and so forth. Actually, percentages is one thing, but it actually the dollar cost is really what it comes down to. And uh, that's the difference on the thing. Uh, if you remember two years ago, the actual dollar cost was minus 53000 yeah, that's how we uh, got the balance drop in students, account, right? Yep, yep. So that's that's how that took place as well. So, anyways, just to let you know on that. So, the good news on the school piece of it is, um, you don't have to worry about that. No big jumps in number of students. Get it? Yeah. You, you do not. Yeah. Well, there'll be actually 19 more students going to the school, but there'll be less students or the same number of students from Milford. Same number. That's what I mean. Yeah, the yeah. 19 is the is the total total, total increase. Population. Okay, if okay. we so good, and we also had. Uh, I guess there's 85 students that came out that were on the, uh, um, yeah, Sadie Hawkins or whatever that, that, that um, 
scholarship is for kids that be able to go to school? The Adams scholarship. Gosh, thank you, Mrs. Adams. We had 85. These the state only allows 75. Yeah. Doc petitioned them a number of years back. So what do we do with kids that's, that that end up being tied? Yeah. And so they said, hmm, good point. So we've actually got 85. So we're 10 above what it is because we took the initiative of going to the state and saying, you, who, who's going to tell what parent that their kid tied, Yeah. but you, you're you not going to get the scholarship. scholarship for four years? So there would be the chaos said, and anarchy and riots in the streets. Yes, he said, no masks, no problem. And yeah, that's the way no it way. Huh? <laughs> Indeed. So I just want to let you know, Patsy, that, that hopefully helps you with your, yeah. your, your at least one part of the school. Yep. No, I appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. Anything else for public forum? Claudette, do you want to? No. Because you're the only one. Okay. Okay. Um, minutes, if any, so we have our minutes from August 14th. Yep, those came in today, so you might not have had a chance to look at them. They're pretty lengthy, and that was a big meeting, as you recall. That was the This was when we had the 89 lengthy, slides. Uh, 89 oh, slides. the 89 and slides. Then the yeah. And the discussion of the legal. The, yep, the actions you took after that in yep. the last half hour. Yeah. So do you all want to take some time with these, or are we good to approve? I don't mind either way. I flip through them and they look okay. I'm gonna wait. Good. I'm good. I'm okay. good. Yep. All right. Looking for a motion. I like a motion to approve the meeting minutes of August fourteenth, twenty twenty-three, as presented. Looking for a second. Second. Thank you, Roland. Sure. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I will call for the vote. Roland? Aye. Richard? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Aye. Matthew? Aye. All righty. Okay. Um, selectman reports. Roland, anything? Nothing. Richard? So we had our first public safety board meeting. How was so it? So it was exhilarating. <coughs> Great. And, uh, I know Peter didn't want to join, but he did join for that first meeting. <laughs> so that was, he had a, a lot of uh, information. To I provide. spoke too much. Uh, so I, I you know, a lot of good information. So um, thank you for that. Some good things kind of came out, some discussions about uh, operations and uh, possible improvements. So I think the one thing that we had mentioned was possibly a, a study and some money. I don't know if we have a pot of money reserved. You might have a little study. ARPA funds that we can redistribute a little bit. How we, much do you need? We had discussed 5000 as a possibility, and I think we we're waiting for... Well, uh, so I chief. did see something from the ch chief, Leon, okay? Yeah. And all he asked for was to do the same study that was done in Blackstone. What would it cost? And it's 20 beans, 20000 that. bucks. That's no. not what we were looking for. No. We were looking for a broader, simpler... Millville specific, but I think we're you were also looking for review what's out there for the best practices. That's what I was asking Basically, for. Basically, yeah. And summarize that, and then that could help tailor what one would look for in a study. So I think that in your next meeting that you have before the selectmen's meeting on the 18th, mm -hmm. hopefully that's something that will be addressed then, and then more specific action of a study could take place because right now all we're talking about is a full-blown study that's not appropriate a study for now. 20 grand that's what we know now now and basically i think what we're looking for is a, a strategic plan from both departments yeah you know basically where we're at uh where we need to be and how do we get there uh basically i think to cover those three points maybe five slides so um and we're hoping that study might give some insight uh into how to measure some of those performance metrics so that's kind of something that we kind of struggling with, I think, how to measure those metrics. So we did refer back to your uh, study on population and, uh, and budget. And, uh, you know, do we look at call volumes? Do we look at, uh, you know, per capita? How many, how many uh, professionals per capita? I, I don't know what the right answer is. Uh, they, being the professionals, would be able to provide that. And they, um, I guess we're struggling a little bit trying to, trying to wrap their head around how to analyze it the best way. Okay. So, should we have a serious com put this on the agenda? Have a serious conversation around regionalizing police because that was the one that did show budget savings. Savings. Well, 
Uh, you know, I, I don't know if we're there yet. I, okay. I would like the Chiefs to come up and say, this is where we need to be. And if okay. that's, and if it's their recommendation to go that route, I don't want to, okay. I don't want to push that's that very message fair. to them. So. Yeah, yeah. That's very fair. Okay. Jen? Yes. Just a quick question. Sure. Um, if you were going to regionalize, say with a Blackstone, for instance, if you're going to do that, um, they just uh, bought a $800,000 fire engine and I think a $600,000 ambulance. Mm -hmm. Would those capital costs then be shared if you were to regionalize? That would be part of the agreement. So either they would say you have to do this to regionalize or we'd say we can't or we'd come up. That would be mm -hmm. part of the negotiation, I think. Yeah, right. I, I would suggest to you that they would probably want to have us partake in that uh, $1.3 million. Um, so would the ooh, the fire department did not show the cost savings to regionalize with Blackstone. I looked at Blackstone and Uxbridge. Mm -hmm. So there was no cost savings there, but there was a cost savings to regionalize with police. The only thing I worry about is that then we end up with the same situation with the school where it's, you know, it's one growing. vote versus three votes and then it's like well now we're going to do this and this and this and it grows and then we're not in savings and then we right. and then we're there and we can't get out we're stuck there forever so i don't i i, I agree 100 percent. yeah so it's like it looks good now but i'm worried about how it looks in five years correct i would be very cautious of going okay. into any type of and if you regionalize with them they're going to insist that you increase the amount of police officers you're going to be mm -hmm. paying at their rate the only real savings you're going to have is you're going to go down to one chief. Correct. But you're going to eat all that in additional costs. That's yep. I, I, well, I, I did send math this a couple of different ways. I'll try to post it on my I don't know if that's a good page. option. I'm saying it needs to be explored from a yep. financial standpoint. I happen to agree. I don't think it's We looked into this about yeah, 12 or 13 years ago. Okay. No, fair enough. Any cost savings with the state when you looked at it? No. Not like a Connecticut model. Well, because they charge more. Well, they do, but typically, yeah, there's, there's different ways to split it because they usually have an area to patrol. I don't know. I just, I just think that, you know, Millville's kind of an island with respect to certain departments where yeah. it's, you know, look at the library, for example. We pay, yeah. what, 40 something thousand dollars for our library? It's worth 50. And, and let's say, exactly. okay, let's say it's $50,000. The, the Blackstone Library's budget is $550,000. It would end up being about $120,000 to Millville to regionalize with them. Yeah. It's not worth it. I know. Yep. So that's really, just an example. With police, it, was, it did work out because it was like 1.8 and ours is about 700000 So that math actually worked out. But again, then... That's what it is today. In five years or ten years, does it still look like that? Do a public records request on the Blackstone police contract. No. Uh -huh. Read through it. Okay. That's a, a lot idea. of hidden costs in there. Okay. Mm. Costs they don't even know about. Costs they don't even know about. Mm. All right. And that would all be ours now. Yep. It's too bad we can't have county, county sheriffs up here. You could be you, Rich. Right. You could be the it. county sheriff. I vote. They do it in Ohio. They do it in Indiana. They do it in upstate New York. Yeah. They do it in Maine. They do it in Maine. They do it in Maine. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But but I did sit in on his his that meeting. And how was it? And it was Still lengthy. <laughs> there was a lot of ground to cover, yeah. and it yeah, with many questions, few answers. Right. So there's a lot to evolve. And yes, it depends on the chiefs to do some homework yeah. and come forward with what they really need, you know. Well, I think if they delegated, you say. if they had delegated the some fact finding to yes. where they are, yeah. and then they looked at where they needed to be, then the committee could try to develop some strategies yeah. as to where to go. But I, I think that's probably the best approach. They got to delegate and they got to do some research. There's homework to be done. Correct. So anyway, it's a, it's a great committee, and I think it has great need for the town. I aimed for an hour. We went two and a half. Yes, was a I was harsh. there. I, I witnessed it. I spoke for an hour of it, I think. Missed the mark. <laughs> we really missed the mark on that one. You know, we're, I think uh, we're digging. It was, the first, was it the first one? Yes. Wow. And we're digging I mean, a lot deeper than I think I had imagined. You yeah. know, but so we're, we're getting there. The Can't do it any First other. one, I think, is okay. You know. And do anything for you? Yep. Uh, so I did meet with the library in the yes. past week. Uh, that was very informative. Got to learn a little bit about their needs and their plans. Um, 
they do have a five-year plan that they created, I think it was last year. Um, so that should be coming through too, so I, we can review it hopefully. Um, and then kind of look at looked at what their goals are and what their space and then what their plans are for programs and that sort of thing. So it's very informative. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so I think I had, so our next meeting is December 18th. Do we want to do a Board of Selectmen ugly Christmas sweater meeting? I don't, I don't even any. have a sweater. You don't have an ugly Christmas sweater? <laughs> <laughs> or any sweater? Let's head out to the bin. I'm the shop. Let's head out to the bin. I don't think we'll find something for you. So no? You can get one on eBay for like 20 bucks. I'm not kidding. You're already starting with a sweater there, Andrew. You already got one. This isn't ugly. I didn't say it was ugly, but you're already pre-gaming. You got a sweater. So no? Oh, I'm for it. Oh, I'm for it. Okay, I, I, I'll come too. in and I get that nice t-shirt. Okay. So even if I'm the only one, I am going to be wearing an ugly sweater at the next meeting. So I'm the first thing. And the second thing was, um, and I'm sorry that Dr. Gullick left. So although we've had differences of opinion on things, I am very grateful that he did step in on July 28th, 46 hours after the other um, water operator resigned without giving us the full 10 days notice as they were supposed to. Mm. So I am appreciative of him stepping in and helping us in that way so and he he said to i know he kind of seemed to couch things but i believe he's always said look i'm never going to leave you kind of without anything so mm. we'll be able to transition to someone um that might go a little bit faster than we anticipated but i do appreciate him stepping in and doing all that work and you can see he's made fantastic progress yeah, he did make a lot of progress. I'm I'm disappointed to hear with the struggles with the you know DEP and and uh, I don't know. I hope that the next uh, person transitioning in that role has better luck as that liaison. Yeah. So I will say, so you know he mentioned so my relationship with uh, Mary Jude. So I always meet with Peter and Mary Jude. I never meet alone. Right. My right. number one goal is to never surprise Peter. So I always do include Peter. She's mostly good at it. Yeah. Like <laughs> though it's bad. Like I don't I don't want to be like what are you talking about? I don't know. Um, so, and the conversations we have, we do try to keep, like, I have Peter share it back with Dr. Gullick, um, you know, and I, I posted something online, he said he didn't like that, so I took it down, and then we, he's like, you know, you made some errors here, I said, fine, so I just went, he's very about the science and the facts, which, again, I appreciate that, right, we're looking at scientific facts, it needs to be exact, so, um, and that's why I kind of stopped on the water and then he provides these slides and we will post these slides, exactly what he presented. So. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I agree with the science and the facts and, 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 and uh, his argument there, but I think DEP has given us some guidance and they've set a threshold. And if we keep crossing it, uh, you know, we're just not gonna have a passing score. But I, yeah, I think, well, I think we're doing well on the passing score. And in terms of the bottled water, like when Mary Jude asked us to provide it, I understand that's different from other places. And, you know, Peter and I can certainly ask Mass DEP about that. But for me, I, and maybe this was a mistake on my part, but I'll just be very honest with everyone. I felt like we had so many things not going our way. Like they said, hey, can you do this? I'm like, yes. Can you do this? Yes. Can you do this? Yes. Like what they were asking us to do, I was saying yes. So, and if anyone disagree with that, certainly you can, I mean, I try to make sure everyone feels like they have a voice and can say, Jennifer, I don't really agree with you on that. Um, Cause you can, but that's kind of how Peter yeah, and I, 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 I manage it. And maybe could... I'm being too, you know, I just wanted to be honest. Like that's, we weren't going, we're, things were not going well. And so they said, hey, can you do these things? I was like, yes, we can. And we, if I could, just yeah. to support Jen, because I, yes, I sat in on every Zoom meeting and meeting we've had with Mary Jude and participated. And I think the whole, one of the things she's done well is established a nice relationship with Mary Jude, <laughs> someone you want to have a good relationship with, particularly where maybe there's some big dollars in the offing for the pipeline approach, should that approach come to fruition? So those are all good reasons not to push back too hard on certain things that are already water under the bridge, so to speak, right? right? So that has not been the approach. You know, Rich Gullick would prefer a different approach, but, you know, he's not the decision maker of the town and the strategy uh, uh, person in terms of how to best deal with mass DEP. So he has his opinion. He's, you know, strong in those opinions sometimes. And 
he's an interesting person to have to deal with uh, on a more close <laughs> basis than you all have seen. I can attest to that. But, uh, but he's been very good for us, and he has stepped in, and he is as knowledgeable a person smart. as you're ever going to find on the subject matter. He's very, how very to deal. There's no doubt he's not knowledgeable, and I think his <clears throat> intentions are in the right place. Um, we have different <clears throat> approaches on like how to deal with things. Yeah, no, no, there's no... He wants to be a crusader. I'm not sure a crusader is exactly the right well, person. I worry, yeah. well, because... You know what I mean? You yeah. know what, he asked crusader. straight up, are you scared of retaliation? You know, I don't know. I mean, could That's could she make question. our life difficult? Like, yeah. could Messi be make her life really difficult? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah they, they yeah, could. Absolutely. So I don't want to, no, I don't no, want to make so people really, I'm kind of like, I'm trying to, like Peter, I shouldn't say I, Peter and I are trying to be like, keep things as even as we can with many big personalities, all of who think that they're very right. <laughs> um, and <laughs> he probably would have been more. The struggle is real. <laughs> the chain of command. Well, yeah, he, he should. If have he had, right. if he was yeah. the boots on the ground guy doing the the science and doing the data, communicating that to you, and then having you guys deal with the school department and the, right. you know, whatever. Even though that didn't go all that well. We before. tried to keep it that way, actually, <laughs> well, to keep us yeah, dealing with the did. school. Yeah. But there was. Um, yeah, so anyway, but maybe we should have as an agenda item so we don't get too far down the path because there are people dying to get me for open meeting law violation. Um, we could have a mass DEP discussion and how you all think we sh if you have opinions, like, I don't like how you're doing this, Jennifer. I'd rather go this way. Like, you, it doesn't hurt, you know, it doesn't hurt my feelings. So what, what I find interesting about it is mass DEP has oversight, but they won't make a clear, decisive decision. Well, for example, if... The water is unsafe. They won't come in and shut your water system down and tell you to vacate the kids. No. But they'll make recommendations. Yet here, they'll tell you that their opinion is that you shouldn't bring in bulk water, but they're not going to, they don't They don't give you a directive. I mean, it's, it's just weird. You have to get their approval to bring in the bulk water. Yep. And she said specifically that she would that they would not approve that. So so you submit, you submit approval, right? And then if you get denied, the appeal... The appeal process is to go through mass yeah, superior yeah. court. How yeah. difficult do you think our life would, like that's again getting to the, like how much, <clears throat> how difficult someone can make our life after that if it's. I mean, but how much are we spending when our life isn't difficult? Yeah, well, well, you know, well, hey Andrew, we're, we're, that's an excellent point. Yeah, we're hemorrhaging money on a well and we're doubling down on this thing, but at the same time, I mean, I, I would, we have legal staff. I mean, we could have filed an appeal. Mm, I think we would have won that hands down. I still think we well, can I think probably we're get off track. Okay, yeah. I don't think let's have this as a uh, well. It's so to be honest, fits under MES water status update. But let's um, add mass DEP and discuss it at the next meeting on the eighteenth. Fair enough. In your ugly shirt and my ugly sweater. Fair enough. We'll have a great meeting. Maybe I'll make um, a dessert. Maybe I'll do, make sugar cookies or something. Do I have to wear an ugly sweater? No, no. If you don't want to. Okay. No one oh, is an forced to wear an ugly Peter. sweater. I I'm not wearing tie. one. I put this on. I was like, look at this skinny tie. thing. Hmm? I think you're great. You look okay, great. Well, whatever. All right. Uh, <laughs> last select <laughs> reports. Matthew, anything? Um, I guess we could talk about the... We have our, <coughs> we've had two green community committee Very meetings. Nice. Uh, we have six people now. Uh, great. Richard's there sometimes. Some, you know. I was there once. I forgot the one before things. <laughs> yeah. I was distracted. We had things to do. We uh, <clears throat> still trying to get our bearings, figure stuff out. Um, I think we're trying to have a meeting this week. I think they discussed Friday, but you know, Friday is a weird time for meetings. But Friday is a weird time for meetings. Yeah. Right. You can have cocktails at the meeting. Is it like five o'clock happy hour? Is it gonna be in yeah. person or is it gonna be online? Because you know, it's gonna be Zoom. It's gonna be Zoom. Just for you. So you could have cocktails. Just for me. Yeah. Well, you know. So I gotta really get Sarah dialed in with you guys because that's part of her role. <coughs> Basically, Support. just yeah. imagine anything green energy. And just say no, because we probably don't have a budget for it. <laughs> well, no. So, for example, she was involved with Mass CMRPC, just submitted an annual report to the state on, you know, green information that we don't have, right. you know, usage and costs and such things. So we, we, what was provided was what was available, and that's what's provided to them as an annual report. And Sarah worked on that with uh, somebody over at CMRPC to get that in. And she's 
we really should have connected you guys in, but it related to stuff you had nothing to do with in the past. But going forward, I'd like to rope her in. Mm. Town Minister reports? I don't really have <clears throat> much because I've done enough talking. Okay. Items not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to meeting. Nothing. Okay, our next regular meeting is Monday, December 18th. Ugly sweater. Ugly sweater <laughs> or ugly tie. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I don't have the second page to read the... Got it. Can I have... Our... Oh, thank you. So I will make the motion <coughs> that we move to enter executive session by roll call. So I move that the board of selectmen enter into executive session for Massachusetts General Law C30A, section 21A3, to discuss strategy relative to litigation, including but not limited to Tatoma versus Town of Millville, Wendy Barber et al. versus Millville Zoning Board of Appeals, where discussion of these matters in open session would have a detrimental effect on the litigation position of the town. I further move that the board of selectmen enter into executive session per Massachusetts General Law C30A, 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to discuss with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the town and the chair so declares police teamsters union local 170 returning to open meeting only to adjourn looking for a second second thank you andrew any discussion seeing none i will call for the vote aye roland Richard? Aye. Andrew? Aye. Jennifer is aye. Matthew? Aye. All right. All right. Thank you guys for staying.